Hello. Welcome to another stream. How about that? How about that? But you didn't expect that shit to happen, huh? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hello, hello, hello. So today is a Sunday, the day of the sun. And that means today, according to the schedule, we are supposed to be doing a game development in Z++. Uh, but since there's currently advent of code in place, we are obligated, it's the law, to solve one advent of code problem. And that's what we're going to start doing right here, right now. But there's a catch. We have to be uh, we have to be using a different language every flipping day. And the language of today is Lua. So yeah, check out this uh, command. So you can find the source code for all of the days here. So so far we solved 18 days and we used 18 absolutely different languages. Absolutely different languages and all of them work. All of them are full solution. So uh, I didn't read the description of the day 19, so uh, this is going to be me first try, uh, first time reading it. So you're going to see a row and cat reaction to this problem. Yes, I'm a reaction streamer now. And yeah, I haven't programmed in law for quite some time already, to be fair. Uh, I think the last time I programmed in law was when I did Pico 8 stream. Uh, oh my god, I good duke. Holy shit. Thank you for your stream, comrade. So Thank, comrade. Thank you for 17 months of tier 1 subscription. Holy shit. Thank you. Thank you so much for such a, uh, you know, um, long uh, support and welcome to our epic Advent of Code Club. How about that? How about that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, um, yeah. Uh, first, I'm going to go uh, and uh, fetch some source code. Uh, advent of code. Uh, let me adjust the volume of the music. So yeah, uh, let me fetch the latest changes just in case I did some cleanups of screen because sometimes I clean up my source code of screen. Um, yeah, okay, so I didn't do any cleanups. And let me create a separate folder for Lua. So what Lua are we going to use today? Uh, are we going to go with like a regular Lua? I didn't even have a regular Lua or we have to go with a Lua JIT. I think if, if our solution is going to be too slow, we can try Lua JIT, right? As far as I know, like it's a, it's a separate implementation of Lua, which just in time compilation optimization and stuff like that. But I think we're going to go with the regular one for now. Um, I'm not sure if that's the same project or different. Uh, Lua is virtual package provided by... Uh huh. You should explicitly select one to install. Okay, so there's apparently several versions and okay which one should we use so there's Lua 5.3 it's looks like it's the latest one let's actually use the latest one right so uh let's not use boomer law uh law 5.3 and let's just try to install that is it gonna install something hopefully oh there we go it's installing things how about that how about that we're we're almost there we're almost there we almost solved the problem we only need to install the interpreter for Lua. <laughs> Well, it is only 5.1. Okay, it's not that bad. I don't think we're gonna use some very advanced Lua magic that is not backward compatible with Lua JIT. And if we hit any problem, we can always port, like backport it, so it doesn't sound like a huge problem. Hello, Sor. Hello. By the way, yes, I forgot to say hello to everyone. Christy Cot, Christy Cot, Eloxor, Iguduk, Quilt, uh, Hap Pepper. Uh, I could do already said hello, Zito, Lazy Grid, uh, Paul Insecure, um, uh, Ray Barg, uh, Kane Corp, Raguil, hello, hello, really glad to see you all today, welcome, welcome, welcome. Do I have Lua now? Do I have Lua? Oh my god, I do have Lua, I can even compute one plus one, I can program in this thing. Cool. So let me start Emacs from within the development run. Ketison, hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. And one plus one test passed. You want to see something, something cool? I cannot program in this. I, have, well, I, I don't know how to program in this. Okay, so uh, let me try to do main.lua 
and I wonder how we're gonna do all of that. Okay, so it's so gonna be function. I do remember that to create a function in Lua, you have to use a keyword function just like in Pascal or JavaScript. To be fair, JavaScript is basically a modern Pascal, right? So, um, and yeah, so we're gonna have something like solve file. I don't even know what's the convention in uh, in Lua. Do I, do you, are you supposed to use camel case or snake case? Lua uh, API reference. Uh, so let's take a look at the API, um, and maybe the API will release a reveal. So the language reveal the style. Uh huh. It looks it looks like they're using snake case primarily. It's more it's more of like no case at all, like in pure C. Uh, okay, I'm gonna use snake case then. So we're gonna have sol sol file. And we're gonna accept file path. And I think that's it. You don't have to add any additional uh, syntax noise. And the thing I need to learn is how to parse command line arguments. Um, uh, so Lua function. Okay, Lua command line args. I'll need command line args. Okay. Command line interpreter. Um, so it's literally arg. So if I go here to Lua and I do arg, it is a table. And if I do zero, it gives me the name of the program and then new for the rest of the values. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, can I do something like, oh, I remember there was like something I pair or something. Yeah, okay. So um, Lua for each. How do you do for each in Lua? Does anyone remember? For each Lua in Lua table with key value pairs. Yeah, I, I remember that you have to use something like I pair or whatnot. Uh, it's like pairs. Yeah, so it's a table. Oh, and, and then you have a key and value. Okay, so I'm going to try to do the following thing. For uh, file path in arg, right, because it's a, it's a single arg for some reason, do uh, solve file file path and in here I will have to print something how do you print to the um, to the standard output Lua print to std out how do you do that so uh, do, 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 do. are you right or just print okay so in print actually can accept several things we can do hello and then we can do world cool and it splits them with these things with three spaces why did it split the three spaces? I'm not quite sure. What if I try to do something like number here? Will it work? Yes, it does work, but it still splits, it splits them in a really weird way. Like I didn't put any three spaces there. What if I remove spaces from here? Uh, is it a tab? No, I don't think it's a tab. It, it's literally three spaces. I think if it was a tab, I, it would select it as a single character. So, uh... Oh, it's, you, you mean I have to use concatenation instead of providing several arguments? I mean, that makes sense, uh, but uh, th that was not my question. The question is, why does it split it like that? So, um, <clears throat> okay. So we're going to do print and we're going to have input uh, file and the file is going to be file path. Okay. Uh, and let me see. So I'm going to create a make file. Uh, and it's going to be a funny a test and test law uh, not law main law and then we're going to have inputs mm -mm -mm. so and then we're going to do the following thing lua uh, main dot lua with the inputs so we'll probably have to ignore a couple of like first arguments because they probably contain either the name of the program or also the file path. We don't really care about them. So, and we'll also have some sort of inputs here. So it's gonna be sample, the sample that we're gonna, you know, uh, read from the problem itself. Okay, so if I try to run this entire stuff, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Uh, okay, so um, attempted to call a table value stack uh, what? Aren't you supposed to work? Uh, table value, you cannot, maybe you cannot iterate like tables like that. What if I do pair C? Is that what I have to do? And then can I ignore this thing? Uh, apparently I can, apparently I can. What's funny is that it's iterating that in reverse order. 
the question is why okay so what what is this key um i'm gonna try to print this key i'm actually confused it's iterating them from one zero minus one Does anyone know what the hell is going on? Um, uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> mm, 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 mm. Because, okay, so arg is a table, right? Arg is a table. But if I do something like this, so uh, maybe even something like this, it is still a table. And if I iterating this thing from the table, right? And I print i, uh attempt to call a table oh yeah yeah you, you have to uh, you have to do pairs again so maybe it's the pairs that fuck up everything no um okay is there any way to dump a uh, variable in lua just to see what's inside of dump uh, a table to, to the console yeah i think that would be very co uh, convenient if we could do that um Choose suits you. There are many ways to do it, but they usually end up using one from pen light uh, table serialization. Okay, is there something like serialize? Serialize arg. Okay, it doesn't exist. I have to use third party dependencies just to look in inside of a table, but it feels like args are like very weird, very weird thing. Uh, okay, Lua, size of table. How can you get the t size of table? How to get the number of entries in the Lua table? So let's find out. Uh, two, 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 two. You already have a solution. The only way to iterate the whole table with pairs. Oh shit, like I didn't expect to be this uh, this language to be that trashy. Holy moly, okay. Uh, so there's literally no way for you to know the size of the table except iterating it through it. Like you have to implement your own length and shit. How people use this language? This is horrible. And people and a lot of people like it. Holy shit. Okay, so <laughs> Oh my god, like, whew. um, this is the most Pepega language I've ever seen. So array size, we can even we assume that an array ends just before its first new element, uh, before it's able to get the length. Well, why Google didn't show me that? Uh, so size, okay, length of table, length of table. Uh, okay, why, why Google doesn't show me, and why Stack Overflow doesn't tell me that? Are they that not smart? Uh, and also, they don't mention this operator anywhere. Uh, okay. But I mean, okay, so they, they have that, and if I do arg, it says zero. I didn't even know what that's supposed to mean. Uh, uh, operator only counts entries uh, with integer keys, and so does get n. Uh, table get n arg okay so maybe uh, maybe i'm gonna actually go uh, a different road uh, because apparently that's going nowhere we're gonna just do sample txt like this okay so and then if i need to add uh, something more i'm gonna do uh, input txt or whatever uh, apparently well it doesn't where is the length why the length is zero while i'm can actually iterate this thing and it may return me something uh, I don't quite understand uh, I think I have to do it like that yeah it has to be like this uh, and it still returns wait a second all right so uh, let's let's try to do this I'm gonna do print um, arg show me how many arguments you have uh one okay cool um if i try to 
now do print rg0 it returns only one thing but what's funny is that if I try to print rg1 it also says sample but it's at the same time it tells me that there's only one there but I found the second one and also I can do minus one apparently yeah I can do minus one and minus one gives me that oh yeah it doesn't count okay it doesn't count from from zero it counts from one I see okay th this makes sense this uh, this makes sense right for um, so is there any way to do ranges uh, Lua ranges we should make a language that indexes from 69 yes Lua variable in range holy shit uh okay uh-huh for if you want to loop use that okay so i should be able to do uh for i equal one arg right and do and and then i can do print uh rg i i think that's what i had to do and uh, if I try to run it now, it, it prints only sample to me, and then I can finally do that. Okay, that was difficult. Um, so far, Lua is less intuitive than uh, Perl. And I'm not even joking. So, so far, it is less intuitive than Perl. Um, okay. It is really strange that the size of this thing is one. But I still can go back, I can still get 0 and minus 1, and these are not included in the size of the table. Um, it's, it's really strange. Uh, it's really, really strange. Uh, Chad, by the way, if you see the hair questions, please uh, tell them that there is a command about that. Apparently these people cannot read the title. Um, okay, so let me, let me do uh, what? Um, yeah, yeah, so I think we're ready. I need to learn how to read the file. Uh, uh, Lua read file mm -mm -mm. Uh, works for array tables that have indices, not for maps, though. Uh, yeah, I think I use i pairs. Okay, let's let's give it a try. Uh, not, not, not Python, Lua. Uh, so what if uh, what if I do just pairs? If I do pairs rg, uh huh. It returned me function table something something and i pairs is pretty much the same for i in here do print i uh, and uh, uh, gvictor vo thank you hello hello how are you doing and it didn't really work um i don't know why we can try to do that one more time but like this print i it doesn't do anything i think i'm wasting my time okay so how do we read file in lua whatever we already solved that doesn't matter uh okay file exists you can open a file all right so you can check the file exists and then you can do io lines from file that's actually pretty cool let me uh open uh the file uh, full bar buzz uh, test I might as well actually put like um, sequence let's do sequence 10 and I'm gonna save it to the temp uh, sample txt right so if I revert the sample as answering like a couple of questions for from Emacs I should be able to do that okay so when I'm solving the file I'm gonna do um, mm -mm, for line in IO lines right so that's what we have here and I provide the file path uh, it's going to do end and then I'm going to just try to print them. So here's the line. So far reading file is actually relatively easy. I'm super happy about that. And now uh, Lua string to integer. How can, can I convert string to integer? So that's the only things that I will need here. Uh, 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 two number. Okay. So and then if I try to do something like this to number uh, plus 69 that should work and that indeed worked so we successfully 
parsed command lines, read the file line by line, um, parsed integers. So that's everything I need to start working on the problem. Okay. And again, I never read the problem, so I'm reading it for the first time. So let's uh, go. Uh, let's uh, go. Uh, advent of code. So uh, the problem 19. Okay, let's take a look at it. Monster messages. You land in an airport surrounded by dense forest. Uh, okay. As you walk uh, to your high-speed train, the elves at the Mythical Information Bureau contacted you again. They think their satellite has connected, has collected an image of a sea monster. Oh, I know what they're talking about. They're talking about this one. Yeah, there is a sea monster in the in the map. If you didn't notice, I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone noticed it. But like, yeah, there is a sea monster. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of funny. Um, well, the sea monster. Unfortunately, the uh, connection to the satellite is having problems, and many of the messages sent back from the satellites have been corrupted, like the government. I'm sorry. They sent you a list of the rules uh, of the rules valid messages should obey, and the list of received messages they've collected so far. Uh, they collected so far. Your puzzle input. The rules for valid messages. Uh, the top part of the puzzle input are numbered and uh, build upon each other. For example, 0 is 1, 2, 1 is A, 2 is uh, 1, 3. I suppose this particular thing probably means OR, and I feel like we are supposed to be interpreting BNF. Did I guess that correctly, chat? Is that a basically a BNF interpreter parser something something? Oh, okay, so yeah, you have a BNF uh, rules, you have a message, and you need to answer whether it fits the BNF description or not. Uh, BNF, you never, you don't, don't know what is a BNF, dude. It's a British national formal formality. Okay, it's a back of snare form. Uh, it's a back of snare form. Uh, so basically, it's a language in which uh, people describe grammar that looks like this it's a grammar nice uh yeah so it usually looks dense like this right oh shit. uh yeah so basically this is like a simple language in bnf and i suppose this is bnf as well usually in bnf you have the names for specific rules but since we don't know what the parts of the message mean they are replaced with just indices Okay, so that makes sense. And essentially, we'll just probably have to just, you know, uh, iterate through these rules and interpret them. That's probably going to be the case. And what's funny is that since they're indices, we can store the rules uh, probably in array, right? And uh, yeah, I, I think I think it's an interesting it, I think it's an interesting problem. But it will probably require a lot of maintenance work, like the data structure, the parsing, um, and so on and so forth. Some rules uh, like 3b simply match a single character, in this case a b. Uh, the remaining rules uh, list uh, the sub rules that must be followed. For example, the rule 0, 1, 2 means that to, uh, to match 0, the text being checked must match rule, and the text after the part that match uh, rule 1 must be match rule 2. Okay. It's, it's a little BNF. Okay, some of the rules have multiple lists of sub rules separated by pipe. Um, this means that at least one. Uh, list of the sub rules must match. The uh, ones that match might be different each time the rules is encountered. For example, uh, the rule 2 means that to match rule 2, the next has to be checked 1 followed by 3, or it must be rule 3 followed by 1. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, fortunately, there are no loops in the rules, so the list of the possible matches will be finite. Uh, okay, since rule 1 matches A and rule 3 matches B, rule 2 matches either AB or BA. Therefore, rule 0 matches AAB or ABBA. Okay, uh, here's a more interesting example. Okay, so um, this could be a sample, by the way. We could put that in samples. Uh, and yeah this is this is literally our sample let's actually put it into samples and then we're gonna work on that mm, okay a sample txt and i'm gonna just put it here and uh, there we go uh, there we go okay uh here because rule four matches a and rule five matches b rule two matches 
Uh, okay, they're gonna actually... <laughs> Why do you need to explain this so much with so many details? Uh, okay, the received messages at the bottom part of your puzzle input need to be checked against the rules so you can determine which are valid and which are corrupted. Including the rules and the message together, this might look like this. Okay, your goal is to de determine the number of messages that completely match rule zero. Uh, uh, in the above example, uh, okay, but do not mark. Okay, the whole message must all. Okay, 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 but extra matched. How many messages com uh, completely match rule zero? Okay, part two. Uh, like um, trying to recover messages. Is part two going to be trying to recover messages? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay, I, I like the problem. The problem is interesting, is that it's a, it's a pain in the ass to actually maintain all of that. Uh... Uh... Mm -hmm. Part two is difficult, okay. Oh, it has a recursive pattern. Ah, okay, sure. It's not that difficult. You just basically have to keep track of what rules you already uh, you already visited, and have to be really careful about that. Okay, so but it's it's a little bit of spoiler, but yeah. But let's start implementing all of that. Let's start implementing that, all of that. Uh, all right. Mm -mm. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, to, 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 to. So this is going to be solve one, uh, but I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to have a s separate function called part one, uh, which does a file path, and we're going to move all of that stuff there. So this is going to be. Is there any string interpolation in uh, in Lua? I, I think it doesn't matter because we can just do something like that. Part one is going to be part uh, one uh, file path. There we go. Cool. And how do you return things in Lua? Is there like implicit return in Lua? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Okay, so you cannot do that stuff anymore. Oh, because okay, you cannot convert them to uh, to an integer. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we need to first collect the rules, right? We need to first collect the rules and then we need to collect the inputs. Um, okay. So uh, I think function parse written uh, about BNF and the context free grammars again, I'm getting PTSD flashback from the code. <laughs> you know, the cool thing is that I uh, never studied BNF, neither in school nor in uni. So I was never forced into that. So I never developed any negative association with it. So, um, yeah, which is kind of cool. Which is kind of cool. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad that, uh, like from, from that perspective, I'm kind of glad that I went to a shady university. So that didn't really teach us anything. So I didn't develop any negative associations or any, like on pretty much majority of the topic of CS. So. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's kind of an interesting way of looking at it, isn't it? Um, okay, parse a rule. Uh, so we're going to have a line, and this thing is supposed to return you uh, like a rule. So I'm going to do assert. How do you do asserts in Lua? Is there any like a com uh, convenient way of doing asserts? That's a too high uh, Q move. I, I guess. I'm, I mean, I'm joking, obviously. So it would be way better if I went to a better university, but I'm too dumb for better universities. They wouldn't accept me. Um, okay, so a cert doesn't accept the messages. I at least I don't see. Um, okay, can you do something like that? Uh, parse rule. Maybe it doesn't matter. Uh, a cert. Oh yeah, you can accept actually. So that means I can do uh, something like this. A cert rule N not implemented. Uh, okay, so let's go. Mm -mm. And uh, here we have to keep doing all of that until we encounter um, an empty line, right? So uh, I remember that you have to use a, a keyword local, right, to collect uh, to define local variables. Otherwise, if you try to do something like this, it will make it a global variable, 
right? It's kind of interesting that in Python it's opposite, right? If you do something like that, it's going to be a local variable. For a global variable, you'll have to use like a global keyword. I think it's a, it's a thing in Python, so right, if in Python I do something like that, so it, it has a global keyword. It's just, it's just kind of funny that it's, it's the other way around. Uh, and I think in Python it is more correct because in the majority of situations if you define a variable inside of a function you want it to be a local variable and you know quite rarely you want it to be a global one. Uh, but anyway, so we're gonna have rules here and is there any way to append arrays? How do you do arrays in Lua? Like are the arrays tables essentially? I think they are. Mm, I got the course for them last year when the pandemic started it was fucking hell. Okay, okay, so this is a new array. This is how we define that. So here's the array of rules. Uh, and how do you append array? Can you push to the array? Lua push array. Uh, insert remove. All right. Python also has non local? I uh, never heard of it. Uh, non local. Interesting. More keywords. So, uh, okay, you can just insert it. So if you do something like this access and then insert uh oh yeah you're supposed to do it like that table insert access 69 and then uh 420 if i take a look at access there we go but i again i cannot actually dump the variable because lower do be like that sometimes so i can do something like pairs and try to print all of that and that, that's what it gives me yes mm. Was kind of interested in Lua, but it's trash. Eh, it's really, yeah, it's really weird scripting language. Again, like I tried a lot of scripting languages so far, and in terms of type system and semantics, Python seems to be the best so far. It seems to be the most con uh, consistent, the most ergonomic, the more the most the more convenient, the most convenient, and so on and so forth. Uh, other languages than Python, they just have too many quirks. Python has like the least amount of quirks among them. Uh, from my experience, right? And if we're talking about uh, like scripting languages, uh, because I, I believe its point was to compare scripting languages with something like C++ or Rust, right? With programming languages. Uh, anyway, so unpack. You say I can use unpack. Oh, finally, something useful. Thank you, thank you so much. What if I try to unpack arg? Yeah, okay, so it gives me that. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Uh, all right, so, um, cool. Mm -mm -mm. What I was doing, what I was doing, so we have that. And if line, uh, for example, not empty, is there something like length? Uh, len, length as a function, len as a function, len as a function like this. Uh, what the hell is going on? I don't understand. Why I cannot type like this? Okay, uh, there's no len length as this. Uh, maybe table size. Um, okay, uh, I, f I forgot. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you supposed to? God damn it! I'm an idiot. Uh, maybe I have to use it like this. Okay, yes. That's how we're supposed to use that. It's like a hash pound. Uh, okay, if this thing is equal to zero then we have to break right then we have to break otherwise uh we'll have to do rules uh, table insert insert rules uh table insert rules uh parse uh, parse rule parse rule parse rule parse rule align right and for now we might as well actually just implement it as a return line and uh, after that, after we parsed everything, I want to try the following thing where I'm going to do table unpack uh, rules just to make sure that I, um, you know, parsed everything correctly. And let's try to run this entire thing. And it didn't really print anything because I'm supposed to print it like this, I suppose. And here they are. Here are all of the all of these things here. We managed to extract them appropriately. Cool. So uh, now. Um, what I'm going to try to do, I need to split the string into uh, into the lines and whatnot. Is there anything like split uh, by this? Uh, split by, so maybe something like this. Okay, so that means I have to Google that. Um, split string. 
Split string and lower. How do you split the string and lower? Come on. Mm, to, 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 to. Seriously? I don't believe that. Uh, G match. Okay, you can use. Uh, really? I, ca I cannot believe that it's just that bad. Seriously, like I, I can't believe that. Uh, so reference manual, index. Okay, split. Okay, there is a G match, but there is no split. Huh? Really? And then somebody asks, why do you think Lua is trash? Okay, that's a very interesting question. I, I don't know why, like, I, I don't know how I get that idea, where it get the idea from. I don't know. Uh, anyway. Um. <laughs> I mean, it's okay language. It's, it's an okay language. I'm just joking, of course. Uh, string G match. Okay, so we're gonna have 0, 1, 2, and what we're gonna match that from. So it's gonna be this, uh, and I, I don't know, we, we're expecting a word here, but can I expect like anything? Maybe just plus, and then colon space uh, plus yet again, and it gives me a function which I need to iterate, I suppose, right? So I'm gonna be iterating through all of these matches here. Uh, Okay, so it's so the key value uh, in, uh -huh, and then I'm going to do, and I'm going to print k uh, like this, v, and then end. And it worked. Okay, so it definitely worked. Um, and I, I guess we're going to use that as well. Split. Uh, okay, hello. Uh, it doesn't exist. So I, wh why are you typing it here? Like, are you debating me? Or you want me to start actually not listening to you? I don't understand. All right. Uh, <clears throat> cool. So what do we have here? Um, yeah, it's going to be line. I wonder if I don't have to, like, use this stuff. Can I just do equals? Uh, that would be actually way more convenient. So something like this. Can I do something like this and then key? V. And I think it, I think I have to do it like that. Uh, okay, is there? Um, we'll iterate over all of the words from a string s printing one per line. Uh, the next example collects all pairs uh, from the given string into a table. That's very interesting. Uh, that's very very interesting. Okay, so let's do. What the fuck has happened? Oh, okay. I just print. Uh, I, I just pr um, pressed boomer for, for a second. Okay, string uh, g match, and I don't really like the fact that you have to use four loops to iterate through that. Like I, I know that there is only one match there, but I mean it is what it is, and it isn't what it is. And what what can I do? What can I do about that? And here um, we're gonna have an index and the actual definition. The actual definition. Uh, all right. In uh -huh, do. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I forgot to close this thing. Uh, oh my god. My brain is shutting down. I need tea, chat. I need tea. I need tea. All right. And uh, then we'll have to. Mm hmm. I wonder if they are in order in uh, input. So let's actually download the input and see if they are in fact in the order. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna grab my puzzle input and they are not in order. Okay, so that's actually fine. That's fine. There's not that many of them. Look at that. There's not that many. Cool. Let's put it here uh, and uh, see what's gonna happen. Okay, so the definitely first thing we'll have to do here is to actually sort everything. Um, and at the end, do we have any rules that match A and B? Okay, that's that's very interesting. That's actually very simple to, to parse, if you think about that. They only have like, or, huh. And they only have like pairs. Let's actually make it super simple. 
Huh. Okay, so it's, let's actually simplify it. Is it a graph? Well, it is a tree, and tree by definition is a graph. Mm. How about making a new language from the scratch for the last day? Sounds like a great idea. Go ahead, do it. I will even watch your stream. Come on. Sounds very interesting. If you're gonna pull that off, you're gonna be the king. Uh, I wanna make a cup of tea, by the way. Um, so does anyone have any questions or anything to say to me while I'm making a cup of tea? So I'm drinking Earl Grey, by the way, if anyone is interested. Mm. <clears throat> uh, use a beast for the last day. Is that the order? Mm. Does anyone have any questions? Feel free to ask any question while making a cup of tea. When game dev after we solve 19th day problem? Mm, how about assembly for the last day? Sure, use assembly for the last day. Nobody actually... Don't believe anyone who tell you that you cannot use assembly for the last day. If you want to use assembly for the last day, go ahead, use it. Uh, yeah, I approve of that. I absolutely approve of that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna quickly go to the kitchen and turn on the kettle and I'm gonna go back. So, yeah, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. I came. How's everyone doing? How's everyone fucking doing, mate? Uh, Alright, so... Um, uh, is it your first time with Lou? I don't think so. Um, I definitely like did very simple stuff with Lou before. Uh, but I mean, it was a long time ago, so I forgot pretty much everything, so... Uh, two, 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 two. How do you define tables? Let's actually learn about tables. Little bobby tables. Uh, two, 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 two. So we can just define table like that, and then you can define it like that, and to be fair... Uh, yeah, we'll have to do it like so. So I'm going to define result. It's actually going to be a local result. Right? It's going to be a very local result. Then we're going to return result. It's going to be result. And uh, here we're going to have a name. Uh, all right, so the name... I, I, want, I want the rule to be a structure, right? Uh, maybe it's going to be index. I don't know. I have not decided yet. And uh, I'm, going to just, I'm going to just assign it here. Um, to be fair, I might as well also convert it to a number, so it's easier than to sort and so on and so forth, because we don't want to sort the indices by their lexicographical order of decimal representation. That would be kind of dumb. Uh, but considering my level of my IQ, that would be not surprising. Uh, okay, so the next uh, step is going to be one of those like uh, rules one of those rules so we have two kinds of rules right so we, we do we have two kinds of rules the first one is uh a single character a single character um um sequence sequence of two um option between two sequences sequences of two so we have like uh two three kinds of rules three kinds of them and i need to come up with um with the names for them so with the names for them to distinguish between them so uh let me maybe i can find some inspiration here so uh match a single character okay so for the single one we're gonna have a single right uh single uh list sub rules that must be followed for example the rule uh, must match rule zero um, okay this one could be like a sequence or maybe just single um, 
Mm -hmm. There can be different sequences, not just two. Where? I don't see. I don't see a single example. It's, it's always two. It's always two or like this. They always have this shape. So, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about, mate. Uh, okay, so it's gonna be... To be fair, we can just call them 0, 1, uh, and 2. Yeah. Some have 3. Where? I didn't see. Where, where, where? Do they really have 3? Maybe we'll find out. Maybe we'll find out at some point. Some of them have one. Okay, so probably we'll have to be a little bit more careful with that. Yeah, we'll probably have to be a little bit more careful. Um, okay, okay, okay. So I'll, I'll have to implement a more, uh, more abstract solution then. Let's implement a more abstract solution. Um, so we'll be a more abstract solution. Um, hello, hello. Uh, but in an input, uh, we definitely have only A and B, right? Only A and B. Um, so it could be like AST nodes and shit, right? So AST nodes. Um, so we can divide, define a function. So it's going to be single and it accepts like a character or maybe S, right? Uh, something like this. It's not implemented yet, of course. False single is not implemented uh, okay then we can have a sequence right uh, which uh, takes several rules like uh, several other rules um, mm -hmm. and to be fair in the input i think i only saw one or per line i didn't see more ors um, we can call it like this. So it could be end uh, sequence, right? So it's end sequence. Uh, maybe just sequence and function or. Uh, see, really? Oh, okay. Uh, aura. Aura. Why or is already taken? Okay, so my, my candle actually is done. So I'm going to quickly uh, go. Let's call it Aura. I think I think it's a good name. So how are everyone's doing? Useless pony, he hurts and plus slightly old meme, uh, Mr. Botka, Goblinus, the Soul Seeker. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Who just joined? Really glad to see you all today. He came. Oh, I fucking came. All right. So we're gonna have Aura, and uh, there we go. So we're gonna have like a tree and whatnot. It would be also pretty cool to um oh let's call it like that rule uh, uh match rule sequence uh rule or right and these are gonna be like very uh quick ways of defining all that the word no the word no. <clears throat> anyway so uh rule match Rule sick rule or cool. Is there any variadic uh, functions in Lua? How do you do variadic functions? Variadic functions. Uh, okay. Oh, this is how you do that. Nice. So, oh shit! You okay? That's cool. It's the same name as the command line arguments in the global scope. I like that. I fucking like that. All right. So uh, that means here I can just do something like this. And this is going to be like just an array. 
Uh, and this is going to be simply a constructor. Uh, but to be fair, is there like easy way for me to just uh, define tables without all of this bullshit? Uh, like as a single like literal? Like without that? Like do I really have to do it like that? Um, I like your haircut. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really glad that you like my haircut because I actually did it myself. I completely shaved my head myself completely without anyone's help. Uh, was pain in the ass. Uh, but if you think about it, how much pain in the ass would be shaving your ass? Uh, uh, anyway, so uh, all right. What do I want you to do? Yeah, table constructors. How do you construct the tables? Uh, yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So XF, ah, that's actually pretty cool. So we can do something like um, W, X equals zero, Y equal zero, right? This is what you can have. Uh, and it didn't work uh, because I forgot equals. Okay, so and then I can do something like this. Uh, but can I do something like this? I can't, wait, wait, wait. I should have actually used like specific numbers because it it's, does not really like show uh yeah so it's gonna be like this oh my god i really love that so i can do shit like that that's very nice okay so um wait a second oh shit ah um <clears throat> uh, so let's actually call it not or but alt because or is already like a keyword in uh lua so it's constantly like you know collides and stuff so uh, we're gonna use kind equal to match so this is a kind match and uh, then we're gonna have a specific value so in specific value is gonna be just that and we can just call it value right so we can just call it value all right uh, so here are the words kind tinder match sure uh, okay kind sequence right and the value is going to be arg the value is going to be arc and it's not vly vly you value that's what i wanted to do that's what i wanted to do uh an alternative is going to be return kind uh kind alternative right it's going to be out and value is also why do you do you type it like that come on uh so and yeah so we have these constructors and to be fair since i don't have or anymore i might as well actually remove them and make them a little bit simpler and make them a little bit simpler mm -hmm. chat are you ready are you flipping ready for an epic tsmr because i'm fucking ready <laughs> um, what are you writing right now? Generally, check out the title. Who am I writing the title for? All right, okay. You were ready this time. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. I'm really glad that you're ready. Um, okay, finally. Uh, let's continue, let's continue. So here's these things. So I got the index and I think this time I can just do something like this, right? So it's going to be index equal to that, right? And then we need to parse the definition, right? So um, so we have a parse rule and we need to parse the definition. Uh, it's going to be separate function. Uh, parse def, right? So it's going to be uh, def. Assert false uh, parse def, right? Parse def is 
not implemented mm, not implemented uh, and definition is going to be just parse def. Uh, def. Cool. How are we going to parse all of that? Well, we need to match uh, these things with several stuff. Um, where is the gmatch? Where is the gmatch? I remember gmatch was somewhere there. Arrays. Did I already close it? I think I already closed it, unfortunately. Oh, here it is. Okay, so there's also match, just match. Uh, what's what's it all about? What's it all about? Let me see. Looks for the first match of a pattern in string. If it finds one, then match returns the captures from the pattern. Otherwise, it returns new. Uh, okay, that's actually pretty cool. But what's the difference with G match? I thought G match is the uh, is that. What's the difference between them? Uh, returns an, an iterator function. Uh, each time it's called, returns the next capture from a pattern. Hmm. Okay. All right. I see. I see. I see. <sighs> to be fair, I still would like to have like um. Hello, uh, Dragon Tiger, ten thousand. Welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I still would like to have just a split because split would make it so much easier to be fair. But maybe this is one of those things that we'll have to implement ourselves at some point. Who knows, who knows, who knows. Um, okay, so this is the parse definition. So I didn't assert here because this is pretty much implemented. Um, mm, so parse definition, okay. So I'm gonna come up with the regular expression, something like this. Uh, it's gonna match this stuff and uh, something that is inside inside of that thing. Um, mm -mm. String match, string match. I think I, I wanna try just string match. So you take the string, the definition, and the pattern, and uh, if this thing doesn't return new, by the way, does new act uh, like uh, true or false? Uh, yes. Uh huh. Sixty-nine. It will be actually better to do that slightly differently, like if new, then. Uh, no, else, uh, yes, yes, it actually acts like that, so I can just test that. Um, <clears throat> match, so it's a local match. If match, then, can I do, uh, I think I'm going to do end for now. Uh, if match, what I need to just return, I just need to return uh match but i'm not sure if it will like return it appropriately right i need to test that first i really need to test that first and see what it's going to return so if i have something like uh a right so it does return just a that's really convenient so i can just do it then so if it's match then that uh do i have a loop else it's going to be something else else is going to be something else and i really 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 want to have a split function uh because it will simplify everything dramatically if i'm not going to find any split function uh i'm going to implement it myself because using regular expressions for this shit is you know no this is just no 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 uh so we can do table concat g match but this is not what i want um there is a split. A split function separates a string into... S but, I, but I didn't see it. Uh, wait a second, it didn't work. Uh, it didn't work. Is that because I just... I'm using like an old Lua? Uh, a split function separates into a list of substrings. Should uh, they separate... Or maybe... Are two common operations... Okay. 
Is that because I'm, I have I have an old Lua? Can I just have a, like a newer Lua? Um, when was it introduced, by the way? When was it introduced? Okay, so Lua... Um, a race. Um, where is it? So Lua 0.5 doesn't have a split. Uh, what other versions of Lua do we have? What's the latest version? So current version. Uh, okay, English. Do you have split there? You still don't have it. They still don't have it. I remember this, that's why I said split, but it, it doesn't exist here. It just doesn't. I'm so confused. Okay. String manipulation. Lua split string by delimiter code example. Um, do we have to import something? Or is it string split? Maybe that's what you have to do? A, B, C. That's what you... No, it is not. And I cannot open this website. This website is dead. Uh, this is so confusing. Excuse me. Why such a simple operation is not available in such a popular language? And why people think it's a good language? I just, just still don't understand. Um... Okay. Compatibility Lua. Oh, okay. So in Python of uh, five point one, it doesn't exist. Uh, the problem with uh, JSA multiple matches. Okay. Can I just steal this code? Can I steal it, please? Because I don't want to implement it myself. Uh, I think it's dumb. I think the fact that I have to implement such a simple operation is just super dumb. Uh, hello, Andrew. Welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, um, use and zero. But by the way, which law do I even have here? Uh, it doesn't even support the version. How can I check the version? I have to do something like that. 5.3. I have a pretty, like, you know, I would say recent law, and I still don't have that. Unbelievable. Unbe unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. So, if I have a split. A, B, uh, C, and uh, just do it like that, and it gives me that, and for this um, full in here, I'm going to do a print, and it didn't do anything, nice, even that piece of code doesn't work, so nothing works, you cannot trust anyone, alright, so let's actually try to live without that, um, I'm surprised, <laughs> I'm actually like genuinely surprised, like what the fuck, because uh, parsing something like this, again, is extremely simple, right? So you have like a t uh, two nested loops, uh, like you have one, two, or three, four, or five, six, right? So essentially what you do, you split this entire string by that, right? And you have these separate things, and within that separate things, you split everything by spaces, and you have like a uh, two-dimensional iteration, and it just works nicely. Uh, but without the split, you literally cannot do that, it's just so dumb. Uh, but uh, it is what it is, it is what it is. Um, okay. So is there any way to take substrings? Substring. Uh, okay, so you can do sub, right? You can definitely do sub. Um, how to use a mouse? Uh, well, you can just throw it away. You know, just take your mouth and just throw it away. And that's how we can uh, stop doing that. Okay, so return the substring of S that starts at I and continues until J. Okay, so one of the things we can do is essentially just uh, implement our own split, right? Let's just implement our own split uh, that searches for a particular substring, right? Uh, searches for a particular substring, finds it, right? And then takes a substring and adds it to the uh to your um to your table so let's let's go ahead and implement that um I, I didn't expect that i'll have to implement my own split in lua this is something that i had to do in um in pascal but in pascal pascal is a very old language okay so i think it has excuses lua doesn't have any excuses seriously it just doesn't have any excuses 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I, I can just implement it myself. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. I'm gonna call it my split. Okay. So and it's gonna accept a string and delimiter. There we go. So uh, what I need here is to find the index where the thing starts. So what can I use there? Returns a copy of S in which all of the first n given occurrences of the pattern have been replaced by specified a repo. Oh, this is so complicated. Okay. Mm, don't like that. Okay, I have a string. How can I find? Okay, I can find that. Look for the first match of the pattern in the string. Uh, okay, and it returns you what? If it finds, uh, returns indices of S where this occurrence starts and ends. Otherwise, it returns fail. So it actually returns you several of them, right? So if you have string uh, match, right? And you have something like one, two, three, four, and maybe a five, six, right? And you have, uh, it's actually not match, it's it's actually search, right? Was it, well, it was find, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I want to say that uh, this, find me this, it found it uh, one, two, three, four, five, or it did it find it at four. Okay, that's very really interesting. But yeah, so it found two of them and I can iterate through them and I can then properly extract everything. The function you copied before works. It didn't work for me, or did it? Well, yeah, I, I tried to do that. It says something about uh, traces, something, something, I didn't care. I'm sorry. Uh, it's cool that it works for you, it just didn't work for me. Uh, and I'm not gonna waste my time trying to understand what the fuck is wrong there. Like, I just don't want to do that. I'm sorry. I'm really, really uh, sorry. Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So then, uh, we're gonna just do that. String find. And we're trying to find a delimiter there, right? We're trying to find a delimiter there. Um, and I wonder if I can do something like this. So we're definitely going to have a result where we're going to push all of that. Mm. Pairs. Ah, whatever. I already decided to do that. Okay, so... Um, whatever, you are distracting me. So... Um, For uh, I in, uh -huh, uh -huh. is it gonna work? Yeah, it's so I have to use pairs then. Pairs, pairs, pairs. Uh, cool, and still doesn't work because why? Holy shit! This is the worst language I've ever programmed in. Oh my god! I I didn't expect. Like I thought. Thought so maybe Pascal is annoying, Lua is the most annoying one, like it just doesn't make sense. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. PHP was actually quite good, I think. PHP was actually quite good compared to Lua and Perl. Uh, but Lua is worse than Perl so far, I would say. Lua is worse than Perl. Okay. So, and it doesn't really give you like a convenient ways to do things. Like it forces a new, such a weird paradigm uh, that I don't quite understand. So it's going to be, if, if it's going to be an index, right? So we found the first index and the thing we have to do, actually, we have to find um, sub, right? So we'll have to do string sub, um, string sub. Uh huh. And it's gonna be s index for the delim. Um, oh yeah, I see, I see. I see. So first, we'll have to know the previous index. So it has to be something like this. So previous is has to be zero, right? Previous has to be zero, and uh, that's what we do here. So it starts at previous. And ends, uh, Lori Master, 
Thank you. Thank you so much for 18 months uh, of Twitch Prime again. subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic uh, advent of Code Club. And the music is so loud and nobody actually tells me that. Uh, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, so uh, here's the previous. And uh, what does it take as a J? Um, returns the substring as that starts and continues until J. If J absent, then it can, uh, equal minus 1. In particular, to call uh, 1j returns prefix of s and sub uh, returns the suffix. Okay, and it has to start. It has to start at one. So if I do string sub, right? So hello, uh, start at one. Yeah, it has to start at one, unfortunately. Uh, but what if I do something like uh, two? It returns me two of them. One, one. Okay, three. Uh, if it finds this thing, that means I should not include the index that we found, so it has to be minus one. Mm. Mm. String find returns to numbers. Thank you, Sherlock. Very cool. Uh, okay, so and then we're gonna do a uh, result. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, insert. So we're inserting, oh, we, we have to do something like table, I think. Table insert. Mm -hmm. Table insert. Mm -hmm. So th then we have to skip previous forward, right? Previous has to be index, right? But since it starts from one, so A, B, C, right? We found one, two, three, D. Um, so we have to start uh yeah it has to be index plus the size of the delimiter so this is how it's gonna go um this is how it's gonna go so it's gonna uh, consume that one that one and then we'll have to do the last one the last one is gonna be essentially just table insert the table insert uh but without this thing so it's always going to be the previous and i think that's very cool i think that's very cool string find mm. Mm -hmm. okay that could be my split actually i think i think that's it that's the uh, the, the whole thing i wanted to implement so let's see how miserably I failed. Let's see how miserably I failed. And uh, my split, if I'm gonna provide this thing, A, B, uh, C, D, E, F, and my uh, delimiter is that. Uh, tail calls, um, do I have to do pairs yet again? I think I have to do pairs or something. So let's redefine it one more time. Uh, my, uh, I can like, like call it one more time. Um, does it have to be something like this? I don't quite remember. Um, <clears throat> All right, so let's do string uh, uh, find. Right, you can you can try to find it here. It gives you this thing, and if I try to iterate this thing with pairs or something uh, it's gonna be like that right but maybe it has like something like this and it doesn't work does it have to be i pairs uh, i have no idea how to use that lua string find show me example on how to use that string find it, it would be nice if they just showed example like four loops in lua are horrible like i don't understand how to use them um uh, okay, so it. Uh, wait a second. Oh, find works not the way I think it works. Okay, so uh, cool. Let's actually let me actually read it one more time. It returns the the size of it. Oh, it returns two indices, the beginning and the end. This is not convenient. This is very not convenient. Why Lua makes everything inconvenient? I just don't understand. Like, it's so not convenient. Holy shit. 
uh, it finds a match, then finds return indices of S where this occurrence starts and ends. Like, it's not really that useful. A third option on uh, init specifies... Okay, so we have to do, like, a completely different thing. Okay. Ooh. All right. This is so bad. Okay. Um... We can try to do something like while s uh, is greater than zero or something. Uh, I lure myself today to see if I still feel it's a horrible. Oh my god! Like I, I thought I already went through all the horrible languages. No, this one is the worst. The uh, semantic of loops is scuffed. The standard library doesn't contain useful things, and the things that are useful they return something weird. Like why? It's so bad. Oh, okay. So, um, luckily, I'm not going to program that language anymore. So, um, okay. Maybe I just didn't used to it, but it's just basically like throws away all of the convention that people developed uh, over the years. Like, why would you do that? It's kind of strange. Um, okay. So, what we want to uh, do here, like, if it cannot find the occurrence of this thing, right? If it cannot find it. Um, Right, so if you have something like ABC and you cannot find it, it will return you a nil. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, that makes sense. That makes sense. And maybe we don't even need this thing. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have I and J and it's going to be string find uh, this in the delimiter. Right, and what's funny is that if you try to do it like that, right, what's going what's gonna to happen? Both of them will become J. Okay, so a uh, uh, new, I mean. If I, we can call them begin and end, and end is already taken. Uh, if I, then we're gonna do that. Otherwise, we're gonna do something else, right? If we have something here, uh, right, what you do, you need to take the substring, uh, starting, from, starting from one um, up until that index, but you have to do it, I think, minus one right uh, because if you have something like a string a b c d uh starting from one up until four it includes that so that means i'll have to do i minus one okay so that gives me that and then i, I can um insert this thing okay cool uh and then i need to update this entire stuff so i'll have to take a string sub uh starting from i um s I up until the end. Essentially, that's what I need to do. Okay, so if we didn't find anything, that means the whole string has to be put into the table, right? So insert result s, and s uh, becomes an empty string, and there you go. There we have result, and uh, I think I did it. So that's essentially what we can do here. Cool. Uh, will that work? Will that work? We are about to find out. We are about to find out, okay, my split, my split A, B, C, uh, D, E, F, E, and I'm going to split it by this entire thing, and it didn't work, did it? I don't think so, it actually uh, didn't work. So, um, what did I forget to do? What did I forget to do? Um, so, if you have that... We just find this thing. We can try to uh, basically print i and j just to see if it does anything. Uh, if it does anything, okay. And then I can just try to run this thing. It's 1, 3, and it doesn't modify anything. Is this because I cannot modify s and it just doesn't do the thing? Uh, string sub a, uh, b, c, d, and it's going to start from 3. Yeah, that's exactly what I would expect, to be fair, right? That's exactly what I would expect. I just do that, and it just cuts it off, uh, and you can progress. But it doesn't do the thing. So if I call it uh, t, right, and I make the local variable st, is, is that what you want? Uh, is that what you, I don't think... I, I think I'm missing something very stupid, chat. I think I'm missing something very stupid. Uh, what am I missing? 
Yes, it keeps on 1-3. It keeps on 1-3. It doesn't modify S, but I, I, I tell it to modify S. Uh, I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand. What did I miss? What did I miss? Mm. Does anyone know what I missed here? Because I don't see where uh, where I missed anything. Okay, while so uh, this thing on an empty thing it will return zero, and while it's greater than zero, you try to find the delimiter in S, and it returns you this range. Okay, so if this thing is new, all right, if it's not new, I mean, uh, that means you can. Oh, I don't skip. Thank you. Finally, somebody said something useful in the chat. Thank you, dear Pandas. I, I'm going to actually trust you. Uh, finally, somebody said something useful. Uh, okay, so we also have to skip it. Uh, I think it has to be plus uh, the length of the D. Yeah. Mm. It doesn't even have... Oh my god, this is the worst language ever. Uh, luckily, I didn't go into like needed continue. Oh, all right, so um, plus D. I think this is uh, this is gonna be it. I think I managed to do that. All right, so uh -huh. finally, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And so then table uh, unpack, uh, table unpack. Cool. Look at that. Oh, thank you, thank you, Japan. This really, 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 really appreciate you. Uh, you're like. A really cool person. I really like you. So, uh, yeah. We have our split, uh, which is actually implemented in a more simple way, in a more understandable way than whatever we found in the internet. Uh, right? Because it's actually pretty straightforward. And, again. Uh, just a okay, let's results and just return you this kind, kind of stuff, right? And uh, I think. Uh, we can start working on all that. So um, let me see. I just want to see if it's easy for me to iterate through all of that. If I have uh, something like this, um, it's going to be I in pairs, my split. So and we have A B C D E F. Right. This is the delimiter. Uh, and then I'm gonna do and and for J in pairs my split. Okay, uh, let's call it chunk. I wanna call it chunk. Uh, basically, <laughs> get them. Uh, chunk uh, space, right? Uh, do and then I'm gonna just print this entire stuff. So I'm gonna print just uh j and then we're gonna separate all of that with just a little bit of that and see if you can actually iterate through this, this entire thing so some things are more convenient uh when you simply have uh you know split function i think they are usually more convenient and uh, trace back uh attempt to get a length of a number value local oh does it return indices I thought it's gonna return what? Uh, I still don't understand how to iterate. I still don't understand how to iterate. It's so painful. Okay, it's one to three. Ah. Uh, do I have to do it like that? Oh, okay. Holy shit. Uh, I can never remember that. Uh, okay, so. Okay, now, now, now we're talking. Look, look, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's way more convenient. That's way, way more convenient. Yeah. So uh, you initially had this thing, and now you can easily iterate it with just split. Ooh. Okay. That's it. Uh, okay. First, like to some of these things you can get used to, but it's just so painful. It's like it's developed by a person who's been like outside of the programming languages meta for a very long time and didn't interact with anyone else <laughs> that's what it feels like um, breaking oh my god are you fucking serious 
Please don't tell me. For fuck's sake. Uh, refresh the page. Refresh the page. Refresh the page. Refresh the page. Page re refresh. Refresh the page. Because otherwise you're gonna have a huge delay. Because otherwise you're gonna have a huge delay, bruh. Alright, so finally I implemented my own split fu uh, function. Uh, that's super cool. That will help me to iterate through the rules. Alright, so uh, we're parsing the rules. Uh, right, so. And this is where I have that. And also I need to parse the definition. Yeah, yeah so this is what I need to do here. Uh, parse the definition, uh, parse the definition. If you don't have that, what we'll have to do, we'll have to do the thing that we did down below. We're gonna iterate through uh, ORs and uh, through the uh, through the other things. You just want it to be banned, don't you? Okay, sure. Uh, 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, now, um, mm, the hate law too, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, uh, what we're gonna have here, what we're gonna have here is, um, hello Zooker, welcome to the stream. Uh, now, what do we got? Mm, Yeah, we need to do my split uh, for the definition. Uh, two, 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 two. Four players, right? And uh, we have sub rule. Uh, it's gonna be like that. Uh -huh. And there we go. So here's the sub rule, and we're gonna also sp uh, iterate over the sub rules. So my split sub rule by space for, um, and then it's gonna be what? Um, just another rule, I suppose, in uh, pairs like so. Um, and from within these entire things, we're gonna have uh, this stuff. Okay. Mm -mm. So this is a single sub rule. This is a single sub rule. Uh, and I think I'm gonna accumu accumulate all of that. Yeah, it's gonna be something like local. Um, sequences. Right. Uh, so this is a single sequence. It's a single sequence. Um, and table insert table insert sequence um, and it's just a name right it's just a name going to be array of indices yeah, yeah i see it's going to be array of indices it's going to be that it's just array of other indices so and or okay fair fair enough i suppose fair enough um or um okay so this is going to be just a rule uh, and a rule can be converted to a number, right? So this is a rule, we convert it to a number. This problem requires a shit ton of maintenance code. Holy moly, oh my god. Like why the... it's just... You, you, you spend so much time just parsing and organizing all of that and then you're gonna spend like 10 minutes or maybe 5 minutes on actually solving the problem. Um, it's just... it's not a good problem, like... It's, eh. Uh, okay, so let me see. So I insert the rule there and it becomes like this sequence. 
And then I need to accumulate the, the final rule here, right? So uh, the result, so to speak, right? So this is the result. And then what I need to do here is um, uh, table insert uh, result, table insert result is going to be table uh, kind is a sequence uh, and I think I'm going to remove that. How many days left? Uh, I don't remember. It's actually the, the whole event is 25 days. You need to subtract 25 uh, and 19 from 25. All right, so this is the sequence and this is going to be the value. All right, so you insert that and after you accumulated all of that, your final result is going to be something like return kind or kind or and value is going to be the result something like this um and then here we'll have to have kind uh, i think match was it match yeah it was match uh value just match there we go so this is the definition uh this is the definition Oh my god, we probably don't need these things. We probably don't need these things. The only thing I want, by the way, is to be able to dump the... Uh... Sadly, I was forced to use it professionally years ago thanks to a colleague who had things with Lua and wrote application for supporting the manufacturing process. Like, I forgot how to use the language by now. Yeah, it's a very bad language. Um, okay, so... Uh, let me let me see so yeah Ooh, uh, dump variable the dump table code example welp I mean if it's gonna work let's use this uh so function and uh let's try to dump all of that so uh we're parsing all of the rules right we parse in a rule then that and when we're dumping what does it do it can uh, okay so it re to returns a string to us as far as you can tell it just returns a string and it is recursive which is quite convenient okay so it's going to be rules dump and uh let's see what's going to happen is it going to work uh Lua has changed the save anyway. Uh, oh shit, it worked. Oh shit, that's actually super cool. Uh, nice. So here's the first thing. Uh huh. So here's the second thing. Uh huh. It's it's really strange. Like separation between these things is really strange. But overall, I'd say it's okay. Um. So there is a six rules and then you have a definition where kind is or and then you have kind value and so on and so forth kind sequence and there's all should be some sort of like a match yeah kind match and value is a and there we go here's the entire thing that's actually kind of cool that's kind of cool um <clears throat> we might as well so we know that it has an index and a definition, so I might as well just to use that. Mm -hmm. So this is how we're going to do that. We're going to parse the rule. Okay, cool. Uh, so here's the rule. Uh, we parsed it, and the way we're going to insert it, we're going to do rules, uh, rules, rule index, rule definition. So, and that will naturally use the rules. Uh, that will naturally use the rules. Um, okay, so let me let me see if it's gonna work or not now. And I think it worked. So does it have a zero? Yeah, it even has a zero. Nice. So it will help me to quickly look up all of these things. So that's super nice. Two, three, four, uh, and then zero. And there we go. Okay, so that looks nice. And in a sample, 
in a sample, we have all of that. I might as well I wanna try that on an actual input, right? So instead of sample, let's, let's try the input and let's see. Uh, that's the whole thing that it managed to parse. So it managed to parse all of the rules. Uh, I'm really sorry for the encoding. Uh, what do you want from me? No, don't save anything. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. So it was kind of hard because Lua is absolute Pepega. Holy shit, it's Pepega. But it worked. It worked. Uh, okay, so let's implement a function. Uh, match rules, right? And you're gonna have a line. Uh, and you're gonna have a line and the rules, right? So then we'll have to implement that. Assert, uh, assert false and uh, match rules is not implemented. So implemented, there we go. So uh, do we have assert anywhere else? I think this is the only place where we have assert. And uh, what we need to do next, essentially, well, Okay, so this one is interesting. Um, this one is interesting. I think we need some sort of variable. Um, parsing rules, true. All right. If parsing rules, then uh, we're gonna put this entire thing here, like this. Else, do something else. Okay, so here is the parsing rule phase. If you encounter an empty line, you switch from parsing rules to, rules to um, false and you need to continue but you don't have continue ah! is the bot banned? no, I don't think it's banned um, let me check it's not banned it's not banned Oh my god, okay, continue. <sighs> In law is the best work I want to steal. Are you fucking serious? Holy shit, a language doesn't have continue, but has go to. Wow! Wow! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, seriously? Are you serious? Holy shit! Oh my god! Okay. Ah. Oh. Hmm. Uh, and then, okay, but it's a five point. Okay, we're using five point three. That's okay, actually. So I'm gonna do it like that. Okay, just do go to. Nice. Um, old. Is it that old? Come on, it's not that old. I mean, seriously, it's not that old. Um, what programming language? 93 oh, come on 1993 it's not that old javascript is uh 1995 it's just it's just two years older than javascript come on it's not that old seriously um for a programming for a programming language it's not that old um um Okay. I don't know. Um, if, so far, it feels like the creator of Lua just didn't ex the creators. I don't know who created it, but so far it feels like they didn't expect to Lua to blow up. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe they didn't take the the language design super seriously. Like I don't know. Um, mm, lightweight multi paradigm design for embedded use in application cross platform since. Uh, I don't know. Um, okay, so I mean, it's it's a language we can program in it. It's it's not that bad. At least it has go to right. So I mean, if it didn't have loops and ifs but had go to, I still could program in it. 
So that's sort of, well, I mean, if it didn't have ifs even with go to, it would be kind of difficult to program in it, but anyway. Um, oh, because in follower mode. Okay, so I think we, we don't need follower mode anymore. Uh, yeah, there we go. I'm sorry, I like, <laughs> yeah, I, I did that and forgot about it. Uh, okay. Um, all right, so let me let me continue. So when we are not parsing rules, we're gonna do what? We have a line. Please note, Sodium wants to. Yeah. Uh, why am I reading my bot messages? Um, okay. So what we're we doing here? We're counting how many valid uh, things we have, right? How many messages completely match a rule zero? Uh, okay. If match <laughs> TTS, yes. Uh, you're you're very funny. Uh, uh, if um, match rule line rules zero, then uh, we're gonna increment the uh, result. So we're gonna have something like uh, a result, which is initially zero. Um, I do like the syntax of Lua, to be fair, uh, but semantics kind of kills me. Um, so a result, does it even have plus equals? Because uh, I, I can never be sure. Oh, okay, it, it doesn't have plus equals, okay. Okay. Uh, um, mm -mm. Does it have my... I have AOC monitor to be fair. I have AOC monitor. How can I check my monitor? Does anyone know? Uh, but yeah, I, I also have AOC monitor. Um, Linux check monitor. DM... Uh, um, maybe. What is, what is that? DMI decode... Uh, DMI decode... Ah, too much effort, I'm sorry. Okay, um, all right, so this is going to be result plus one, and then and, and uh, after that, we'll have to return the result. Uh, okay, so now we're trying to match a specific rule. Cool. Um, it should return true or false or anything or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, there is no loops in there, right? There is no loops in there. How we're gonna approach that? So, first we need to see if that thing matches that rule. Um, <laughs> Okay, so we're finally into the most interesting part, actually. We're finally into the most interesting part. Um, so I'm going to replace input to the sample. It took us two hours to, you know, implement this entire parser uh, and uh, also fight with Lua. So it actually... Uh, what did it say? What did it say? Yeah, global match rules. Time to call a new value match rules. Oh, okay. Uh, match rule uh, rules match rules single one mm -mm -mm. <laughs> yeah I, I think go to gets too much shit in an industry thanks the extra by the way very cool um, I think like go to takes way more shit than it's supposed to again because of the extra um, Goto is not as bad as majority of people think. Um, mm -mm -mm. I really want to pee, by the way. So uh, let me let me go to and <laughs> pee. Small break. Small break. Two minutes. Didn't have to continue yet. Mm. All right, let's make a small break and you guys uh, have fun.
Yo, what's up, Epic Hackers? How's it going? Welcome back. So, uh, let me continue. Let me think how we're gonna approach all of this, right? It definitely has to be like a recursive traversing. Too early? Oh, let me go back and pee more. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, so, we're gonna start with index zero. Right. Uh, speed run. Um, Yes, so definitely a speed run. So I think it's gonna go like in a very parser combinatish way, right? When you try to match a specific rule, it consumes a little bit of the line and returns the line it consumed. And if it couldn't consume that line, it will uh, return you nothing, right? So, okay, we, we first of all, we need to extract the rules. So we're gonna have rules zero. So here's the rule zero. And in that specific rule, you can have uh, several kinds. Uh, it's actually not rule zero, but rule index. So you have several kinds of these rules. And how do you do switch case in Lua? Uh, uh, Lua switch uh, case. Mm -mm -mm. Switch statement. Mm. Eh, okay, it's uh, okay. It's if else. I mean, it's not that bad. Uh, I can save it like to here. So let's put like this kind. Um, if kind uh, is equal to match, then that else. What is el uh, else if? It's kind of interesting, so they... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Could have, like, at least did L if, but they just said it's like that. All right, kind. Uh, so we have match, you have sequence, right? Uh, and you have or. But maybe... Yeah, it has to be alternative. I forgot. It's uh, match, sequence, and alternative. Uh, sequence, else, if, kind, alternative. And uh, otherwise, uh, we're gonna do assert, saying that um, unknown kind of rule, and we're gonna just do something like uh, this. So here's the unknown kind. We've never seen that shit before. All right. In case of a match, in case of a match, we do a pretty simple thing. Uh, if line um, first of all has anything, but if you have like an empty string and you try to access something, yeah, it it will return you that shit. Oh, you cannot even an expecting symbol really. So we have a string. How can you get like first character? Okay. Oh, it has to be one. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. No. How can you okay? okay. Uh, Lua index strings. Is that even a thing you can do? String indexing. Um, what is this? Do I have to save it to... Uh, 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 uh. Um, I'm confused. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, you cannot. Okay, okay. so that means... To... <laughs> All right, so the only way to do that, okay, is something like this. Oh, and... Right, and they do a hack they basically uh, re-implement the index operation on the string object to call to subst... <laughs> ah! Ah, what the fuck is this language? Okay. 
Oh, all right. I mean, fair enough. Sure. Okay, makes sense. I'm not gonna judge. Uh, but by the way, if you have an empty string, if you try to do something like, uh, what does it return? It returns an empty one actually. So, um, okay. It's a simple language without bells and whistles. Yeah. No, assembly is more consistent than this. Um, okay. So uh, we can do the following thing. Oh, it actually simplifies one interesting thing. And here's the problem. I want to use short circuit in here, but I'm not sure if Lua supports... Like, Lua is so sus. It's so sus to the point that I'm not sure if AND and OR support short circuit. And I have to Google it up just in case. Uh, <laughs> short circuit. <laughs> like, it's just... I, I wouldn't be surprised uh, if it doesn't support short circuiting. Um... Mm, yeah, you can end the strings in, uh, in assembly quite easily. Uh, the logical... Oh, what the fuck? I, I pressed the wrong. The logical prayers are and are not like controls uh, consider false and new as a false the prayer and returns the... Okay, so uh, short... Both short categories, that is, they evaluate the second number only. Okay, so this is official website of Lua and they say that it's a short circuit. Okay. Uh, cool, thank you, thank you so much. So that means I can do that. So kind match, um, and then uh, I'm gonna do what? I'm gonna do a string sub line, and I'm gonna take the first uh, element here, and I want it to be equal specifically to their args. So I might as well actually, did I call it args in the rules? Uh, I called, I think I called it value. Yeah, I called it value. Let's call it value as well. So I'm gonna destructurize it basically like this. So, and if it's a call value, <clears throat> oh yeah, I, I'm an idiot. I don't even need short circuit because it has to be inside of it anyway. So if this thing matches that, uh, we'll have to return something new. We'll have to return um, this thing without so it's gonna be string sub uh, for the line and uh, I'm gonna basically skip right basically skip this entire thing uh, otherwise if it doesn't match I'm gonna just return uh, new so this is how we know uh, that they match or not cool all right it's, it's kind of funny how, like, every time I program in scripting languages, I have a, an urge to check if this thing compiles, and then I realize, oh, there's no compilation step, so I'll have to just uh, continue. Okay, so the next thing is, uh, if it's a sequence, right, if it's a sequence, I have to, ev uh, like, iterate through the sequence. Um, yeah. have to iterate through the sequence, and uh, it's going to be a rule in uh, value, right? And, and what we're doing here essentially is um, match rule. Oh yeah, so in the rules, what do we have? We simply have uh, indices, right? Yeah, in the sequence we do have indices, which is quite interesting. It is quite interesting. Mm. Oh shit, my brain is shutting down. Yeah. So it's if it's a match. Mm. Is this stream dead? Uh, oh, everything's okay. It's just really weird that nobody's saying anything. It's just the chat is dead. <laughs> Stream is okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for, for issuing this macro. Um, I think uh, I did a, a little bit of a fucky wacky and maybe just a, a touch of oopsie doopsie. Uh, but not much. Not much. Uh, hello, PNQ, uh, UA, and Gnang. Welcome to the stream. How are we doing? So. He exposed that it's a macro. Well, you told me that. Uh, oh no, you 
didn't tell me that. You told you said that on one of the Hero Hearts and Plot streams, I think. Uh, I'm actually lurking quite a lot in other people's chats uh, without saying anything. So yeah. And by the way, every time if you like say it's sodging in one of these chats, I actually get a ping, so uh, I can actually see when people talk about me. So yeah, keep that in mind, by the way. Keep that in mind. So here's the line, and uh, here are the rules, and this is the index, right? So this is another index, sub index. Let's call it sub index, and I can just check. Um, uh, I can just check. So this is that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, and what's funny is that if any at if at any point line is equal to nil, we just have to return nil, right? We just have to return nil, and it's gonna be okay. All right, it's gonna be okay. At some point, to be fair, it can become very empty. Right, for example, if you have a string A and you do 2, you just get an empty string. But it's kind of different from nil. So, uh, is empty string the same as uh, this? So, I don't think so. If this, then uh, print yes. Uh, I'm waiting for the day of Cabal. Cabal is too weird for me, to be fair. I'm not sure if I want to do it. Okay, cool. So empty string is not false, which is exactly what we want. That's cool. So uh, if we encounter nil at some point anyway here, uh, we just instantly return that. And at the end of this entire stuff, we can just return line, whatever the line, beca the line became. Yeah, cool. So we implemented that. We implemented that. I don't even know what Cabal looks like. You can always Google it up, right? You can always Google it up. It looks quite scary to be fair. Uh, I programmed a little bit in it and uh, I was super confused. Holy shit, this is not useful. Okay, this is how, what it looks like. So it doesn't have like uh, infix mathematical operations. To add one to x, you literally write add one to x uh this is how you do math and cabal this is not a joke seriously uh so because of that i'm not quite sure if i want to do that uh do you plan to upload an advent of code on youtube dude where have you been look at this channel you see this channel you see this channel subscribe there also go to the tab playlists on that channel and find the playlist advent of code Everything I solved so far on the stream, like everything that you see in this repo, like we solved 18 problems in 18 different languages, right? So it, the source code, first of all, is available on GitHub. Uh, everything is actually documented and there. So at any point you can go and watch me program in any of these languages. Bruh, what are you talking about? JS is there. JS is there, yeah. Mm, yeah, there we go. Yeah, subscribe to this channel. It's an epic channel, I'm telling you. Uh, all right. Um, so what we're gonna have here is uh, I also want to do a sort. Did I did I actually fuck it up? I feel like I fucked it up. Yeah, I fucked it up. Okay, cool. Um, no. So here we have a sub rule uh, in value. And uh, then we're gonna have end, and we're probably gonna do something like line here as well. Uh, so it has to match at least one. Uh, mm, the number of messages that completely match the rule in the above example. Um, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
So, and within this sub rule, right, so uh, sub rule contains that. And uh, what's funny is that we expect that sub rule kind is kind of equal to sequence, right? Right. And then here I'm going to do the following thing for sub index in sub rule value. Right, we do this thing. Uh -huh. And we just first of all match all of that. Uh, we just first of all match all of that. Okay. And. This one is not particularly convenient, unfortunately. Hmm. Okay, so uh, match. I, I think we need separate functions for all of that. Match. So this one is a match rule index, and here we can have something like match rule uh, sequence, right? So it's going to be uh, rules, and here we're going to have a sequence instead. Right, and essentially, this is what we want to put there. Uh huh. So it's a separate thing. Uh, Anabotu! Anabotu Sama, hello! Welcome to the stream. I really apologize for this mess of a language. I don't like it either. I, I don't like it either. <laughs> I th like, people ask me what was the most annoying language so far. Lua. I think I found it. I think it's the winner. Uh, of being the most annoying language. The indices start with one, doesn't have continue, uh, iteration semantic is absolutely weird, um, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> uh, okay. It's a language for mods, nothing more. I guess, fair enough. So, you, you mean for, for the Twitch moderators? <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, so uh, mine test uses Lua and stuff like that. It's a Brazilian language, really? Nice. And Lua is, is in, in Portuguese, okay. So the creator Robert, uh, yeah, it's kind of sound Brazilish. Okay, it is a Brazilian language. Yeah, Lua means moon. Yeah, in Russian language, uh, moon is Luna, which is pretty close. I mean, they're in yeah. <laughs> Tables are kind of cool though. Uh, what's cool about them? They look like tables to me. I don't know. Uh, they look like tables. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> so here's a sequence, and uh, what we're gonna do here is just reuse that. Mm, footballers. <laughs> That's an interesting uh, word. Uh, so match rule sequence and we provide the line, we provide the rules and we provide the what? We provide the sequence. So here is the sequence. Um, yeah. So until it doesn't fail, we just continue doing that. Cool. So in here in sub rules, we expect them to be sequences. <clears throat> we expect them to be sequences and um, if it doesn't fail, we actually have to go through all of these, for all, through all of them, and check all of the possible rules, just in case, I think. Um, yeah, I think we'll have to check all of the possible rules. So, um, good, false. <clears throat> okay, and then uh, it's going to be like this, uh, match rule sequence. Uh, we'll provide the line. To be fair, for OR, I think it's kind of weird. In case of OR, like what do we return even? Mm -hmm. What do we even return? The first one? The first one that matches? 
But what if the first one that matches <clears throat> is not going to make something match in the future and you have to match something else? <clears throat> so it's kind of interesting. So I suppose what you have to return, you have to return like a sequence of possible... Um... Yeah, you literally have to return a sequence of possible endings. Oh, and that explains a lot. That actually explains a lot. Uh, let me close all of that. Yeah, so match, uh, match rule index and match rule sequence should actually return not a single uh, like unparsed output, but possible unparsed outputs. Uh, possible unparsed outputs. And you know, I think I already saw that before. I think I already saw that before. So if you take a look at Hoogle, uh, and the class read, uh, and we need to wait a little bit because it's a prelude uh, page. It's huge and it loads up like for half of an hour uh, until we can get into the actual thing. It's, it actually gets worse and worse all, all the time. So, yeah. Okay, I think it's a waste of time. So I'm gonna go to GHCI and just check in, in GHCI because it's unbearable. So it's like a single HTTP page and it just loads for like, like a solid several minutes. Uh, GHCI, maybe I need to buy a new laptop. So, so, okay, so info read, read, info read. So, and for this thing, you need to, for, for this thing to implement, you need to implement read s and in read s you actually get a parser commander that doesn't return you a single rest things to parse it returns you a list of them and this is because you can have several possible uh several possible uh outputs and that's essentially what it is you can have several possible outputs Okay, so can I have something like this? Can I construct? Okay, I can construct array like this. This is actually pretty cool. And then I can take the length of it. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and no outputs essentially is going to be uh, like this. So this is the single thing here. Uh, and then this is like this. So matching several rules is very interesting. Mm -hmm. mm, each consequent rule can actually give you more stuff. Um, all right, so that makes sense. Let's continue. Mm -hmm. uh, so for each rule in here, you'll have to... This one is interesting. Okay. So we go through the index and instead of the rest, you actually get several of them. You actually get several of them. And you need to handle all of them, I think. I think you need to handle all of them. How do you need to handle all of them? Yeah. Just iterate through all of them, but then... Um, well, I mean, you can keep pushing them, I suppose. Mm. So we have this next index, and then you check that index on the next things. Oh, I think I need a cup of tea. Uh, I need a cup of tea. By the way, if you have any questions or want to say something to me, feel free to do so. I'm going to grab uh, a bowl to dispose the tea leaves. Mm -mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
All right, I'm gonna make a cup of tea. Uh, does anyone have any question questions uh, while I'm making a cup of tea? While I'm making a cup of tea, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting what we have here. So it's definitely recursive, but you also have to maintain a lot of like this rest of the inputs. And I'm not sure, sure if I'm doing that correctly, but maybe it doesn't matter that much. Maybe it doesn't matter that much. Mm -mm -mm. Feel free to ask me anything right now, right here, while I'm making a cup of tea. I'm making it real good. Make some tea for me too, please. No. Uh, does anyone have any other question? Uh, have you tried some milk in your tea? Yes. What language we can expect to see in, o, uh, in AOC? Uh, two incomplete ones. Ji Yang, welcome. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? How are you doing? Okay, does, does anyone have any interesting questions? Well, I mean, any questions, sure. Um, will we see Zeke in AOC? No. Uh, any other questions? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. hello, hello, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome to the stream. Uh, <laughs> Fortran stream when? I'll think about it. I'll think about using Fortran at some point. To be fair, like it becomes increasingly more and more difficult because the problems become more difficult and the language is like <laughs> less familiar for me. So it's actually a double challenge for me. Uh, right, because on top of like solving the problem, I also have to fight with the language. Uh, will we say assembly? I will think about that. So I heard that the further cha like challenges, like the last challenges, are usually simple. I might use assembly on them if they do become simple. Uh, what do you subject yourself to this? Do you like pain? Uh, I mean, monster, did you choose a language and stick with it? You seem to jump around a lot. But this is because I'm not a developer. Okay, let's continue. Uh, so, um, yeah, thank you everyone for the, the questions. They are the pretty good questions. I really enjoyed them. Okay, um, <clears throat> so what do we have? I'm, I'm just waiting for my kettle, by the way. I'm just waiting for my kettle. Hmm. <sighs> So here's an interesting thing. We can have inputs and which is going to be a single line here. So this is match rule sec. Right. So then we are iterating through all of these things. We're iterating through all of these things. Um, so this thing gives me the rests. Uh -huh. So it starts to grow exponentially, and I'm afraid that maybe it's going to take too much time. But maybe it won't. Who knows? Maybe it won't. Uh... Yeah, Tanasov, so here's the small truth that I'm going to reveal to you. Uh, it's a secret. It, it's an industrial secret. There is no useful idiomatic code. All of the idioms are trash. So, yeah. Haven't seen a single useful idiomatic code. Uh, all right. Just deal with it. It is, it is what it is. 
forget about the geometric code. Uh, no. But so I think I have a geometric code in my at my job place, and it works. Ah, ah, ah. Sure. Uh, okay. Is the kettle? Yeah, kettle is still going. Mm. So I need to focus now. Um, for each index, I'm actually iterating also each input, right? For uh, input in inputs, mm, for input in inputs, and uh, that gives me even more things here, uh, more inputs, right? More inputs. So here's the input and uh, you have the rules and what is the okay so then you have sub index uh, and if at any point right, if at any point you end up uh, well I mean it doesn't really matter because uh, then uh, you need another variable, another uh, more inputs here. Uh, I don't know how to call this one, but the idea here is that you have to append them. Uh, you have to append this thing back somehow. So if I have two sequences, right? Uh, if I have two sequences to arrays, can I just do something like that? Uh, you cannot. Okay, so maybe there is a table concat of some sort. Is there something like table concat? Uh, okay. Um, which is, okay. Uh, Lua table concat. Mm, table library. Um, maybe array concat. I think I need array concat. Concatenation of tables in array in Lua. Mm. Why every time I Google some operation, people suggest just implement it from scratch? <laughs> ah, you see, okay, so I guess I guess that's what that's what you do here. Uh, okay, so let's let's call it more inputs here, and essentially uh, we're gonna do a rest in this input, and it's gonna be more. So we have to insert this thing. So it has to be like table insert more inputs rest right and what's funny is that if at some point more inputs becomes uh, like uh, empty that means we didn't find any matches at all okay so let me uh, you know do the same thing Okay, so here's the inputs, here's more inputs, and uh, cool. Mm. I think I can remove that. If uh, more inputs, well, we can do something like this, I suppose, uh, right? Inputs becomes more inputs, right? Once you, we uh, went through all these inputs, it becomes more inputs, we can do that. And somewhere here, if inputs equal uh, zero, uh, then we're gonna break out of the loop, right? And what we're gonna return afterwards, um, I guess we can return inputs then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so this is what we can do here. Uh, inputs. So you have a single line, right, and you, do match rules. Uh, yeah, it is absolutely scuffed. It has break, but has no uh, continue. It's just, oh my God. It's... 
It's really painful to work with, not gonna lie. It's really painful to work with. Um, okay. So, if we have a sequence here, it works like that. All right, and everything looks okay. So now we have a kind of alternative, right? So we have a kind of alternative, and that's very, very interesting. Mm. What's funny is that in the majority of the situations, I don't think. Well, it may, yeah, it, it may be actually like that. So we have to be a little bit careful. Uh, we have to be a little bit careful. So I need to think how I'm going to implement the alternative, right? So sequence is actually pretty straightforward, but for alternative, you have to iterate the sub rules, which are, you know, these things. Um, we have a single line. Okay, I'm gonna just wait until my tea is ready, and then we're gonna continue. Um, I'm already spent like three hours on the part one. <laughs> ah, holy shit! Okay. Um, So I probably would solve this problem a little bit faster if it required less parsing and less fighting with law. So this is the reason, by the way, why I'm using different languages every day. So because uh, if something goes wrong, I can always blame the language. So it's actually quite convenient. Um, yeah, that's the actual secret here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Exactly, minimizing the language syntax. But why does it have a break then? Hmm? Why does it have break then? You could have just added go to and completely remove break and continue, but it still has a break. Bloat, am I right? Hypocrisy and bloat. That's what it is. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, all righty. So if I do uh, for each individual sub rule, sub rule is a sequence, right? Uh, and that's what I can do here. Might as well maybe do it like this, so I can call the sequence in a value and match a rule sequence. I'm going to provide the line, the rules the line, the rules, and the sequence. And again, that gives me all of the possible like outputs, right? It gives me all of the possible outputs for, for that specific thing. For that specific thing. And how are we gonna... I just don't know how we're gonna organize the results. So the result is definitely gonna be this. But what do I do with the rest of the inputs for, for this specific thing? Um, do I just append them? I feel like I just append them. That's what I do. Yeah, I think I just append them. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. So, and then uh, I can just do input in, which I just simply uh, table insert result input there we go so i think this is how i'm gonna do that and then i'm gonna just return the result so um match rule index right and match rule index will return me like uh, all of the possible ways it uh like can match it and if there's at least one it uh it it does match to be fair be yeah it's Maybe I'm maybe I'm overcomplicating it right now. Yeah, I'm overcomplicating it. We probably don't need this kind of stuff, and it may end up very slow because it generates a lot of shit. 
so I'll probably have to cut it down because what we need to do here essentially is just keep backtracing it until we find the one where like the the output result is going to be a nothing right so we just have to keep backtracing but maybe it's not going to be that slow it just depends on on the size of rules and stuff like that anyway so match rule index uh, where do we use it we don't use it anywhere uh, match rule Oh, it's just match rule index. All right. And this thing's thing is uh, greater than zero. All right. So uh, here is the sample. Here is the sample. And let's see who matches this. So do, do we have the answer to the thing? The answer is two. So only two here match these rules. All right, so we see how let's see how scuffed it is, and it is uh, very scuffed. Uh, new value match rule. Okay, so we call something that doesn't exist match rule index. I think this is what we have to do here. Uh, attempt to call and call a new value like match rule index returned a new. That's really strange. Uh, let me let me see. Uh, Why is it new? It doesn't have to be new. How is it new? Uh, what is new though? Um, so it's N93. Okay, if uh, local value. Oh yeah, thank you. Oh my God, it's it's so bad. Yeah, 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 thank you, thank you so much. Uh, it still didn't help. Um, it still didn't help. Yeah, I'm ready. Falling, falling apart. Um, if value equal new, then... Is there any way to crash? I, I think we can always assert false. Right, assert false. Uh, print dump rules index. Um, okay, and it didn't do anything. Okay, that means. I'm confused. What exactly is new here and why am I trying to call new? Attempt to call a table value. Wait a second, you can't iterate them as uh, this, right? I keep, oh my god, I, I keep forgetting how to iterate this thing. I think you cannot do that. Oh my god, oh yes, oh shit, oh fuck, it's so bad. Like, <clears throat> it, oh, calm down. Yes, that's that's and this is even that's not enough because if you have something like this, uh, you have to you oh, oh. and now I have to go through all of this and the f the fact that it just you know lets you do that is so fucking painful. You forget that you have to do it like that. Oh, it's so bad. It's so disgusting. Oh my god. Oh. It's it's a good language. I'm sorry. I'm I'm, I'm sorry. It's it's a good language. Now I need to go through all of the places where I use four, right? Um, I just I'm just a bad programmer. That's what I'm saying essentially. Like, yeah, it's 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 a good language. Uh, okay, so that's what I have to. I, I keep forgetting that. Like I zone out and I keep forgetting about this thing. Like it's just so bad. Um, and uh, yeah. And it's probably going to end up very, very slow. Uh, it's just fighting with the complexity, but managing complexity in Lua is just so painful. Okay, so we don't need that here thing here. We don't need that thing here. Uh, and this one is going to be this. Pairs. And I don't know what's the difference between I pairs and not pairs. Is it part one? Yes, it is still part one, believe it or not. That's how bad it is. 
That's how bad Lua is. My god. Uh, okay, so... Um, uh, argument... Bad argument 1 to the pair. So. Expect... Table expected got new. Uh, well, fair enough. This is because we need to iterate sequence. Okay. Uh, Alright. So match rule and what we do here is match rule index another one uh, attempt to call nil value field question excuse me um um dynamic languages by the way am i right a new value field question what so rules is a new value that's what you're trying to tell me rules is a new value did they uh did they call this thing incorrectly so first it has to be input a rules and index. Let me find all of the places where I call this thing. Input rules index. Nice. In okay. Input rules index. So I'm pretty sure. I'm quite confident that I call everything correctly here. Um, so this is a sub index. So I just iterate everything correctly. Oh god. And I have no idea. Seriously. Like it actually goes quite deep. Um, and I'm not sure. Um, so maybe this is what it returns me, maybe index. I wish I could like catch maybe and just explore what's there somehow. Uh, just catch and explore it. <sighs> this is, the, by the way, it, and it's also the worst uh, error message I've ever seen as well. So, if rules uh, index, right, if rules index, then uh, if actually like equal new, if it's equal new. Uh, let me print the index. I'm gonna also wrap it in this thing here. And then we're gonna assert false, just to see what's going on there. Uh, okay. So index turned out to be a sequence. That's interesting. That is interesting. I wish we had... Well, this is not how it should work, though. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I... I think I understand what's going on. Is it to do with the race? No. It doesn't have to do that. Uh, it's too it's it's too much time to explain why. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, so that means I just passed a wrong value. So instead of like having an index here, we got uh, a sequence, and I might try as well to try to dump it just to see what's what's there. Okay, so we got this sequence. Uh, one, two, three. So it's a four, one, five, and I'm not quite sure why we got this thing here. Uh, where did we get that? Four. Oh, it's 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 even the first one. I see. It's even the first one. Um. Okay. Um. So obviously, if I dump these rules, right? If I dump these rules, I actually need to dump them. Um, mm, 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 
parsing false, go to continue, and then I want to print dump uh, rules, and then I'm going to assert false. I'm going to assert false, and let's take a look at these rules. Let's find uh, zero. All right, so here is the rule zero. Let's explore it. Let's explore it. So it's an alternative, right? So it has a value that, right? And it has a kind equal to that. So here it is. Uh, then, since it's an alternative, since it's an alternative, it will fall into the category of here, right? It will, it's not a match, it's not a sequence, it's an alt, right? And uh, what we're doing here, right we're taking the values um okay and value becomes each an individual sequence right value becomes each an individual sequence and we need to keep in mind that sequence is not a sequence of numbers it's actually a node it's actually a node so uh, when we are iterating this sequence, it is not a sub-index. That's the problem here. I found it. Okay, I found it. I found the bug. Um, it's not a sub-index. What we have to iterate in here is not a sequence, uh, uh, actually, but uh, its value. And we can also assert, by the way, that sequence kind is equal sec. So that's what it is. I basically, yeah, I'm thought that sequence is an, a, a sequence of integers but it's actually a node but by, for the sequence rule that's what it is and that's why it fucked up um which by the way could have been caught by a static type system speaking of dynamic typing system and static type system actually you know um whatever uh i mean it had ty it has types what do you mean it has types uh if it didn't have type you, you wouldn't have uh, to have like two number right where you could do something like this and if it didn't have type you won't well i mean it ha it has coercion but um it has types so everything is a map or table is number a map well you can think it's a map but it's a different kind of map what i'm saying is that like I don't think there are languages without types. Even assembly has types. So there is is uh, weakly type languages and strongly type languages. There are statically type languages and dynamically type languages. I don't think I can name a single language that doesn't have types. Like I don't think it's even correct to say it like that. Um, they all have types, otherwise they wouldn't be useful. Uh, it's just they they check them differently at different times that's what it is so i don't think it's correct thing to say um so what i'm saying here is that it doesn't have a static typing <clears throat> mm. assembly technique doesn't have sure buddy whatever you can do you can believe in whatever you want okay um all right so let's continue uh so where is the asserts? Um, okay, so this is gonna be like this and I'm gonna just remove this thing and let's try to do that. And it actually returned three, which is not what I wanted. Uh, which is not what I wanted. It also, it's kind of strange. Uh, it keeps printing, like where is the dump? Uh, yeah. Huh. And also dump rules here, okay. Okay, there's three of them, uh, which is not correct, by the way, which is not correct. Um, because uh, we have to have like two of them. Well, we might try to print them and see uh, what we have here. Right. Uh, print line, print line. So this is what we found. So uh, A, A, B, B. So we found these two things that match right we found these two things that match uh, oh my god oh, move away i don't have time 
All right, uh, remove that. So, and it is true, right? It is true. But for that one, it is not true. So the question is, why did it count that one? So let me see. We can try to, uh, to do that. So result is zero. Then we match it from starting from zero. Um, so, and for each of them, we might as well try to uh, print, like dump, the uh, rest of the outputs, basically the combinations. Uh, it's not going to be particularly useful, I think, because all of them are going to be just empty strings, but we can at least see what's going on there. Um, it ignored the last character. That's a good point, actually. I think maybe that's what we'll have to be careful about. Uh, so here it is. So we're going to put it as a result. Rests. Um, and for the rests, yeah, let's actually take a look at them. Yep. So we need to make sure that all the like results here, um, <clears throat> fully parsed. So let's introduce a function. <clears throat> Inputs fully parsed. So we're going to put the uh, input here. And by default it's true, but for input I pairs input if input greater than zero <clears throat> it's so interesting like first i'm complaining that it's pointless to add commands in the title they read the title they executed the command and it's pointless to have a command maybe i should just don't do anything with the titles and anything with the command because uh, what <laughs> um all right so in if it is uh, greater than zero that means uh, false like what's the point i know what you're doing okay <laughs> okay <laughs> all right um <laughs> so uh no we're gonna put it like that um it's a very it's a very philosophical question i would say if fully uh, inputs fully parsed. It's actually called fully parsed. Mm -hmm. Fully parsed. Okay. So I don't think I need this thing. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I see. Uh, hmm. ah. Brain, 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 local inputs. Um, inputs square zero and that. It's probably a very slow solution, by the way. It's probably a very slow solution. Okay. <clears throat> mm. But if it's gonna work, maybe it's gonna be poke chump. Is it gonna be poke chump? Hopefully it's gonna be poke chump. Um, say that, ah, not really, I'm too dumb. I never actually implemented anything like that before, like the interpreter of BNFs. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going the right route. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so, and it feels like this thing sh should be super slow, uh, considering the amount of... Not really, like, we have 136 rules. Uh... Okay, and 
let me copy paste that one more time i just want to be 100 percent sure that everything's okay and uh, let me maybe add that thing here as well <sighs> i mean And how many do we have them there? Um, 423. I'm actually a little bit skeptical. I feel like it's not gonna be first try. I have a feeling that it's not gonna be first try. Holy shit! <laughs> what the fuck? Ah. Kalumbetka! Oh my god! Thank you! Thank you so much for 8 Lua months of tier 1 subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic lua club holy shit like <laughs> i didn't know i would be able to pull that off uh honestly i never implemented anything like that like uh, i guess like a little bit of function programming experience helped me to keep track of a very recursive branchy uh, system because it actually grows exponentially super fucking quickly um and it's it's kind of scary like if you miss one thing it just falls apart and especially in such language um and it's uh, yeah it's really difficult to troubleshoot you saw how difficult it is to troubleshoot especially the things that could have been caught by uh, a static type system it was not pleasant at all uh, Damn, if I was live streaming, I would solve it beforehand and then fake it on live. That's exactly what I do, Alan, uh, uh, Alan Road 1. Furthermore, I'm actually lagging one day behind. So uh, I'm actually solving uh, 19 first and I'm only solved 20th day uh, tomorrow. And you know why? This is because I wait until everyone posts their solution on GitHub and then on the next day I steal that solution and I fake uh, me struggling and programming and stuff like that. This is actually a pretty cool uh, way of doing that because it makes you look like, a, you, like you're a gut coder. Uh, yeah. That's how I do that. Mm -mm. Imagine faking <laughs> content for three hours. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm a professional streamer. I can, I can fake anything for three hours. Um, the only challenge is the language. Nah, it was too easy. I was just pretending, chat. Chat, I was just pretending. It's me pretending that it's difficult, okay? So, actually, I've been programming this language like for five years already, so I know everything about it. It's just, you know, to farm that chat activity. That's what I'm doing. Hmm. <laughs> it was a prank, bro. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so to be fair, I'm kind of scared uh, because it's a uh, dynamic language and shit. What the oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Like, I just ran R from a random folder and R already pooped some garbage in it, like, just so casually. This is so rude. Like, look, oh my god, look at that. Uh, you do R, you just open R, and you quit it. Alright. And it just casually poops some shit in the current folder. Like, it just... Like, no one's business. Like, holy shit. Seriously? Uh, this is the rudest language I've ever seen. Okay, can I just remove all this crap? Uh, how do I do that? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> So, uh, I want to actually commit it, um, because I'm afraid that I'm going to screw something over. Um, it's with dot, you, you shouldn't notice. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, add day uh, team part one. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to push it yet. I'm not going to push it yet. I'm going to... Well, I mean... Yeah, I'm going to push it, whatever. Uh, okay, part two, right? P part two. What about part two? Uh, so, oh shit, I need to pee, I need to pee, uh, small break, I mean, I, I need to google uh, uh, the solution for the second part, I forgot the solution for the second part, so, uh, let's actually do three minutes, because I think uh, I'll need, like, extra time to google it properly, uh, okay, okay, there we go, so, uh, let's make a small break, and you guys uh, have fun.
Yo, what's up, Epic Gamers? How's it going? Welcome back. So, um, okay. Um, so I think the music is a little bit too loud. Let's turn it down. As you look over the list of messages, you realize your matching rules aren't quite right. To fix them, I completely replace rules 842 and with the following. Okay. All right. Uh, really? So it, it it never happened before. So essentially, the in the second part, they provide you a patch to the input. Seriously? Uh, patch to the input. Uh, all right. So let me let me see. Um, so and I wonder if that thing depends on your input. I think it does depend on your input. Uh, 42. Yeah, I do have that. And for L, um, 11. Uh, where is another one? Uh huh. Okay, makes sense. The small change has a big impact. Now the rules do contain loops. And the list of messages they could uh, hypothetical match is infinite. You'll need to determine how these changes affect uh, which messages are valid. Huh. Unfortunately, many of these rules are uh, unaffected by this change. It might help to start by looking at which rules always match the same set of values and how those rules, uh, specific rules 42, uh, are used by the new version of rules 8 and 1. Remember, you only need to handle the rules you have. Mm. Building a solution that could handle any hypothetical combination would be significantly more difficult. And formal grammar huh okay uh, but how does it affect our current solution okay so um, for example we have that mm. without objection uh, 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 updating 8 11 this rules only match this time messages however after updating rules later total uh, 12 messages You should try to uh, to run it as is. Yeah, I was actually thinking about that. I have a feeling that I might have implemented a very general solution. <laughs> so, yeah, and that would, that could explain why it was so difficult for me. <laughs> uh, okay, let's let's see. Um, it's gonna be part one. But what about part two? Uh, part two. Part two, file path. Cool. Uh, we might actually extract maybe parsing uh, the lines and the rules into something else. Uh, let me do something like this. Mm, function uh, parse, uh, parse file. So it's going to be file path. Uh, I just want to extract that uh, so it looks a little bit better. So uh, I want to refactor, so to, uh, compared to all the weird people who try to create a regex for the rules and then run. Uh, yeah, like, wait a second, people were trying to turn it into regular expression or something? I, I don't know, maybe they never heard about formal grammars though. Uh, well, I mean, I, I personally heard about formal gra grammars, but I never worked with them and I never coded anything for them. But from what I can see, it's basically just iterating, like the grammar forms a tree over, or a graph, and you essentially recursively iterating it and interpreting it. It's almost like you're interpreting, uh, interpreting a parser combinator. Uh, at least that's what it felt. It felt like a parser combinator. Um, Part one encodes the FSM rejects. Uh, yeah, true, but I actually implemented a very recursive solution. Um, anyway, I, I, again, I know nothing about formal grammar, so maybe wrong. I just made, I, how do you do a regex? Wait a second. Ah, I know. I know. Since it's a tree, well, not necessarily tree, but at least as a cyclic directed graph, you can just iterate it and generate. Okay, okay, I see. I see, like, that just didn't even come to my head, to be fair. 
I guess I'm too dumb for that. <laughs> I'm too dumb for a regular expression solution. <laughs> ah. hmm. Excuse me. It didn't even occur to me. Yeah. It's like... Huh. Hmm. Uh, anyway. Regex is very uh, something I think of. Yeah, I guess I, I've been burned by regular expressions so many times. Uh, the first thing I try to do, or like as a reflex, is just to not use them. Um, all right. My solution is actually very similar to how uh, parser in Haskell works. Like in Haskell, there is a, a interface for deserialization of types. It's called read, uh, and uh, to implement that. Um, you need to implement method read uh, for, for that interface. And method read actually accepts a string from which you have to deserialize the type and returns you uh, a list of the possible rest of the, uh, uh, rest of the inputs. And then you can chain these reads several times and it can actually have like all the possible uh, things that can be parsed into and then you can select uh, which thing you want to actually parse or something like that and that kind of inspired my solution uh, destroy computers what the fuck hello haven't seen you in a while how are you doing how are you doing how's your new job uh, programmed in in rust yet uh, yeah hello hello so k when i don't even know what is k but uh, <clears throat> but today we're using Lua. Um, it's a very scary language. I really don't like it. Um, okay. So here is that parsing rules, and what we're doing here, we are iterating through all of that. Uh, destroy computer, Sama. Please don't destroy my computer. Imagine you get a Rust job, then you just spend all day screwing around with Cargotomo file. Yeah. Is Cargotomo Turing complete? That's a good question. Uh, then we can have lines. So, and in here, what I want to do, we're going to just push the rest of the lines. That's how we're going to go about that. All right, so it's going to be um, table insert lines. Actually, did Rust this whole... Oh my god, that's actually super cool. How did you like it? How did you like it? Like, I never programmed in Rust, like, for real world. So, what does a big, serious code base in Rust feel like? Is it manageable? Uh, especially, are you scared of modifying anything in that code base? Because uh, maybe the type system and borrow checker just give you confidence. It's like, you know, if you just screw something over the uh, type system and borrow checker will, you know, back you up. So, does it give you confidence uh, with big uh, code bases? I see you were molding too hard while I was awake. So, it's the first time you see me being bold. Well, I mean, welcome. Welcome to the stream. I think it's been already more than a week. And to be fair, I already shaved several times. I think at least three since then. Uh, because the hair apparently grows extremely fucking fast. I didn't know that. Uh, but yeah, it grows extremely fast. Anyways, so, uh, whatever. Mm -mm. So we insert lines, we insert this line here, and uh, that should be it. And after that, I should be able... It's not big yet, I'm working on the new direction. The web API, so the code base is small. Oh, okay. So, but yeah, when it grows to a decent size, uh, it would be interesting to see how it's gonna feel like. Yeah. Especially for web applications and stuff. All right, so we're gonna have rules equal rules and uh, lines equal lines i'm not sure if i can do that here but yeah so here we're parsing file and what i want to do here is now um <clears throat> do something like this so it's going to be local uh, puzzle uh, parse so what was that parse file uh, and we're going to do file path um, and I can get rid of that and here I can just do line in uh, puzzle lines right so I'm just situating lines I can remove all of this uh-huh then all of this 
and rules are just puzzle rules. Okay, so that's what's cool about that. That's what's cool about that. Uh, understandable hair annoying as fuck, but I'm afraid I'd look ridiculous with the bald hair. Yeah, I actually got really lucky. Apparently the shape of my skull uh, looks good for being bald. So yeah, it's kind of cool. At least that's what people told me. Maybe they're lying to me. I don't know. Um... Mm -mm. <laughs> so here's the puzzle input and here it is. Um, mm -mm -mm, let me see and attempt to call a table value. So where did I do that? Oh yeah, it has to be pairs. You look badass. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I uh, at least heard. You know, I actually look terrifying without glasses. Like I look like an actual criminal or something. I'm not gonna take the glasses glasses off, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I can take off the glasses and just go on the streets, you know, <laughs> rubbing people. I do not approve of these kind of things, I'm just joking, of course, but yeah. Uh, and because I'm bold now, it is really uh, uh, important for me to not wear con uh, contact lenses, because again, without glasses, I just look like a criminal of some sort. <laughs> uh, okay, so part two, so we don't have a part two yet, so that's the problem here. Yeah. Uh, all right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So let me remove part two for now. Getting used to the skinhead lifestyle. We do not approve of skinhead lifestyle on this Christian channel. Uh, took off glasses once on stream. Good instant. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, and got charged with extremism instantly without even saying a single word right because if i take off the glasses i look like an extremist extremist like right away uh anyways so god damn it it's so funny uh all right so here's the input everything looks okay uh but here's the kind of strange thing here is that we need two different inputs, right? We need two different inputs. So here's the input uh, 0, 01, and we're gonna just do input uh, 0, 02 txt. Input 0, 02. And in 0, 02, we have to re do the replacement, right? We have to do the replacement. Mm, so what we'd have to replace here? Tattoo glasses and get contact lenses. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, 842, right, needs to be replaced with this thing, making it essentially recursive, right? So this is what we've got. Okay, another one, another one, another one. Uh, has to be like this. Cool. I'm gonna put it right here, right now, right here. Okay, and now diff u input 0, 01, input 0, 02, and a boom. So here are the differences. So we're saying the glasses help you not being detected as extremes by facial software. <laughs> It's especially was kind of difficult uh, to, yeah, here's the thing. When I rented this apartment, right, so I had a long hair, all right, and the thing I was afraid of is that the next month when the uh, uh, landlady will come in, uh, she will be really afraid that she, like I was really afraid that she was, uh, she won't be able to recognize me. So the thing I, I would do uh, when she called me to tell me that uh, she's gonna come over, uh, I tell her in advance over the phone that I changed my hairstyle, please don't be scared, it's still me. So <laughs> I had to like prepare her <laughs> before I show up. She was totally okay, by the way. She's an absolutely lovely lady. So, but <laughs> yeah. I was so scared she's not gonna recognize me or call the police or something. 
Um, yeah. Anyways, um, <laughs> so let's continue. Um, okay, so I think I, I did this every, uh, everything correctly, All right? So I actually want to do a div like um, input um, patch. Okay, and we'll take a look at that. Oh yeah, that's, that's actually that's actually pretty cool. Uh, Emacs has a special mode for viewing divs. I, I, I think I already talked about it, but I keep forgetting about it. Um, I keep forgetting about it, so we can actually see the difference between them. Um, and as a matter of fact, I wanna do what? I, I'm gonna do zero one. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm, make. Okay. All right. Here's the moment of truth, chat. I'm not gonna change my solution. I'm gonna simply try to uh, use the second file. And I think it's stuck. I think it's stuck. No, 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 I think it's stuck. But I mean, it did the thing. Uh, I tapped poggers and everything. Yeah. Uh, was it bigger or smaller? Wait a second. I don't remember. What, what did it say? Was it bigger or smaller? So maybe it would give me a hint. Uh, one more time. Ah. Uh, uh, Thirty-four second left. Okay. I missed it. Was it bigger or smaller? Anyway. So I suppose we can try to think uh, it said lower too small oh okay so it's actually more than more than that mm, so if we're starting to have recursive rules how are we gonna how are we gonna approach that because we already have been all of that pretty deep Already dipped. Um, okay, so let me see. Let me see. Is fully parsed matching type index. Mm -hmm. mm. Contain loops and a list of messages. Uh, all right, so uh, it loops onto itself, right? It loops onto itself, and yeah. Oh, essentially, they, they just loop onto itself. Uh, maybe we can simply ignore them. Can we? Who goes into eight? Who goes into eight? Check clip answered too small. Okay, so we need more of that. We need more of that goodness. Uh, let me see. So who goes into eight? Um, okay. Zero goes into eight, and eight then loops onto itself. All right. Oh, 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 that's very interesting. I see. I see what's going on. Huh. Becomes that or that. So these eight and eleven are actually at the root. They're actually the root, and that's what makes them actually, um, you know, it's very all of that. Hmm. 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 What's funny is that if you consider this thing, if you consider this thing, this is actually a very interesting rule. So, what does it mean? It matches 42. It matches 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, and so on and so forth, right? Um, and another uh, interesting thing, uh, this thing, this thing matches 42, 31, um, come on, 32, 31. 
So it grows like inside, right? So yeah, 42, uh, 42, 31, where it grows like inside. We can try to actually change these rules to add more of this stuff until we get enough. It actually depends, uh, like how, how many of the things we can put there. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting solution. Um, so our current solution, our current solution, what does it give us? What does it give us? Okay, two, three, two. Uh, two, three, two, I'm gonna put it here. So this is the current. My idea, essentially, my idea is to replace this rule with uh, eight or 42 or or 42 and just keep piling them on top until we uh, get enough of the solutions. You see what I mean here? And here, instead of like this one, we can do something like this, 42 or that or that and more and more and more. That should work. So, and uh, the question is how many of them we need? Well, uh, we can try until it stops grow growing, I think. Though I'm not sure why the original code didn't work for that. You think it should, it should work? Um, yeah, I'm not sure either. So my neighbors is just actually banging. They don't like me programming anymore. Maybe my original code is just not correct. Maybe that's what it is. So, okay, so we have uh, input. Uh, I would guess that rule eight greedily aid the input, not allowing rule 11. Maybe, maybe. So, uh, but do I wanna go into like a proper solution? I'm not sure. Uh, considering that I already sp spent three hours fighting with Lua, I just want to, you know, solve it and forget about it. <laughs> uh, but uh, maybe later implementing like a general solution would be interesting. Mm, less Lua more. Yeah, um, I didn't expect that Lua is going to be so toxic. Oh my god. Um, that is very toxic language. Okay, so, um, so this is a 0-3. And I'm gonna try to add four rules here, but I'm not sure how many we'll need. Uh, and 11, uh, 42. So here is another one. Uh, yep. I'm gonna take that one. Uh, one, two, three. And I can add another one just in case. Uh -huh. There we go. Uh, K, what is a K? K programming uh, language, which is a dialect of IPL. Ah, is it is is it better? Is it better dialect of IPL? It doesn't look like a better dialect IPL. <laughs> oh holy fuck! Okay. <laughs> um. Okay, so we have uh, four of them. And we have four of them here. Will that change anything? Okay, so we're gonna add input uh, 03 txt. Apparently it is used commercially. Ah, I can see that. Um, I can see that being true. Never tried it though. Have you tried APL though? Okay, so input 02. It's gonna take some time. It's gonna take some time. Uh, for zero 03, it's also taking some time. And is it gonna even do the trick? Okay, it increased it a little bit. Just a little bit. But what if we give it more? Right, what if we give it more? Um, so, 8, 42. Uh, how about that? It's gonna be that, another 42. Uh, 11, 42. It's gonna be uh, that, and there we go. 
So let's see. So two, three, five. Cool. And it actually fits the definition of it being too small. Uh, will it increase? Will it increase anything? If it's not going to increase anything, I'm going to just submit two, three, five. Um, Okay, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Ha. Huh. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's keep increasing then. Let's keep increasing. Forty two. Oh, wait a second. So five. I have extra space here. Okay. So this is saved state. Okay, I have extra space that I didn't take into account, by the way. Yeah, it could be. It could be the case actually, because I'm uh, actually parsing in a very dumb way, so that could affect things. And Lua being, uh, you know, a very weakly typed, it may not necessarily throw an error on such things. So uh, didn't eight had other rules, but forty two no. So um, it was looped into itself. You see, it's forty two. And or 428, which loops into itself, which it infinitely generates 42. That's what it does. So that's why it's just 42, 42. I'm just basically expanding these two recursive rules uh, until uh, the, it gives me the right answers. No, it didn't do a thing. That's really strange. Okay. Uh, okay, let's actually increase it even more. Let's increase it even more. So this, there's going to be that. So it's going to be 5. This is 6. This is five. Huh. I'm really confused. So one more time. Forty-two. Mm -hmm. I have a strange feeling that I could have actually fucked something up. Forty-two, thirty-one. I don't think I fucked anything up that much <sighs> you don't have seven in eleven yeah that's true what are you talking about I don't have to have it <laughs> like uh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Um, okay, so two, three, four, five, five, six, six. Uh, real programmers don't trust computers uh, to do the question, but instead unroll it manually. Yeah, exactly. Um, maybe I did something correctly. One more time. So, sir, serious surgery, what are you talking about? I don't understand. Uh, is your solution? I think it is greedy. I think it is greedy. Um, but the question is, why does, doesn't this work as it is? So that's the real question. That's the real question. Okay, maybe we can try to make it less. Yeah, sometimes the first option can be correct, but it should be the third or something. 
Uh, I, I know, but I am taking into account all solution. Okay, whatever, let's actually try to do that. You have 742 and only 642s in 11, but maybe I don't understand. Okay, f finally, thank you for telling me that, because your message out of the context, like, doesn't look, doesn't make any sense. Uh, where? Uh, in 8. I don't really see where, like, okay, so here's the 6... Six, cool. But, but you say it's in eight. I don't have seven, two, three, four, five, six, why are you confusing me? Seven. The amount of why did they, why do they have to match? Why do they have to match? Um, all right, I can add another one then. Uh, so if, it, if this is a six, uh, oh, that's what you mean. I see. So they have to have to match maybe that's what you mean okay let's find out i didn't think it mattered it shouldn't matter in my opinion it shouldn't matter we're gonna try to play with all of these things and uh if that's not gonna work uh we're gonna go into the code and we're gonna try to make it uh, better i suppose we'll see doesn't increase it uh, 235, but I remember there was 235. Maybe 235 is the correct one? No, it's not the correct one, so let's not guess it. Um, Alright, so let's try to understand what's the problem here. What's the problem? How we're doing all of this? Uh, match rule index. Match rule index. So we're starting with the index. If the kind is match, we're just, uh, you know, checking if it matches and then we return the rest of the input, which is only one option. Otherwise, we return nothing, right? We just return nothing. If it's a sequence, we're matching the sequence. We can try to match the sequence, right? Uh, so here are all of the possible inputs for that specific input here. I'm iterating the ind uh, indices. If the input is already, like, empty, we have to stop, but I'm not sure if we can stop, if it makes sense to stop here. Does it even make sense to stop here? Because I don't think they can be empty, because we're uh, filling up anyway. Um, would 444 make a difference? Uh, it's, it's a good idea, but I already started to think about other solution, Jay Young. It's, you're breaking my context now. It's really bad. And if it's especially it's going to be super bad if it's not going to work. Uh, it's a good idea, but again, I already started to build up a, a completely different context. Um, uh, okay, and yeah, I'm, I'm going to try it because it's a good idea. Uh, but again, it's it's really painful to switch context. Uh, and especially going to be super painful if it's then it doesn't work. It's just going to be. Uh, it's okay. Um, can I put it like that? Yeah. I think I can reverse it like this. Uh, yeah, like this. Uh, I think my solution is just incorrect, because uh, if it was correct, I wouldn't have to do any of this. But yeah, it could be. Let's reverse that one as well. Uh, 
Oh my god, my brain doesn't work. Um, so it has to be like this, but I have to do it like that. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, I accidentally saved temp, but that's okay. Right, it could be actually slower if... Well, okay, it didn't change the 0, 2. Alright, no. mm. <laughs> it's okay. Whatever. It's just my solution is incorrect. Um, damn it, yeah. Okay, let me think about proper solution, all right? So let's stop with all the shenanigans, right? And let me build up the context for the new solution, all right? Okay, uh, but that was a good at uh, that was a good at attempt, in my opinion. I think it was. Mm, so here's the input, and I think we kind of always have that. I'm, I'm just afraid that we'll have to start over. That's what I'm afraid. Um, I'm just afraid that we'll have to start over. And also I'm representing all of that in a not very good way. In a not very general way, I would say. Maybe that's what I have to do. Uh, it could be that that's exactly what I have to do. Let me restructure things. Look, I already have a uh, match rule sequence. So I might as well actually uh, define match rule alternative. Match rule alternative where I ex uh, take this and alternative. Right. And uh, in here, we're going to just do that. And the problem here is that yeah it will probably help me to make it a little bit more generic um yeah so here's the result yeah so and i know that it's a sequence mm -hmm. that it's a sequence Don't distract me, okay? Please. Uh, I have my own ideas. Um, Alright. So, um, out, kind, have to be alternative. Right, so here's the alternative. Then we iterate over out, I think it's value. Uh, I'm robot. Thank you. Thank you so much for 16 months. 16 months. Amazing. Love IT. Thank you. Thank you for 16 months of tier one subscription and uh, welcome to our epic Lua Club. How about that? How about that? Isn't that amazing? I think it's goddamn amazing, bro. All right. So, um, so I'm iterating over alternatives and. Um, it's actually a bunch of other rules, right? And I don't think this thing matters because we're gonna uh, dispatch it uh, at some point and we need to match the rule, right? We need to match a specific rule, um, right? Match a specific rule. Aha. Uh -huh. So, and then this thing will become, I'm so afraid to touch anything, you won't believe, because there's no compiler that will check all of these things for me. It's so scary. Um, it's unbelievably scary. Okay, so 
we just iterate over that single row that give us these things we put into the result uh, and then we return the result um, cool so we can handle this match here so that's totally okay and then in here uh, what I have to do is essentially just uh, return match rule alternative so i'm basically making like um polymorphism here i'm implementing polymorphism based on the type of the uh of the rule man so and here is the match rule index right it's just a match rule index and maybe that's not what we have to have here actually because well yeah so it gives you a sub-index. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I know what I missed. I think I know what I missed. I need uh, another kind. I need another kind of a node. That's what I need. So in the parsing a definition, I have a match, right? Sequence and alternative, right? So we have a specific match you have a sequence you have alternative and i think i need uh the fourth one which is an index and that may simplify things around that's the direction i want to go into so let's actually try to do that um okay so the sequence uh this is kind of a sequence and here is a sequence and what i do here i just add a number mm fully parsed uh, where uh, so where exactly you see problem here so I have all of the inputs right and if a single input contains more stuff than zero that means this stuff is not fully parsed where it unfolds. Where do you see the problem? You distracted me, tell me tell me where you see the problem. I do that intentionally. Where? Maybe I have to do like pairs instead? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> you fucking joking? <laughs> Are you tro you trolling there? Seriously? Like am this is an inst like this is a troll like seriously go away uh, if you're gonna distract me tell me my function incorrect and without telling me where when i say i don't see it well you're trolling me wasting my time uh, if any of the results are empty it should return true finally this is what i want from you okay but this is not correct um because in that case it would return an incorrect value for the part one uh for the part one why did you distract me from that why did you distract me from that and uh, okay i swear to god you're trolling me i swear to god Part one was incorrect, you got lucky. Where it was the Stop saying it's incorrect without explaining yourself. I'm gonna ignore you. Like this is annoying as fuck. Like I don't need to know whether correct and correct. Like seriously. You're doing that intentionally? Same reason. Okay, I'm I'm gonna just check it and if he, if it's incorrect, you're I swear to god you're banned. You're like literally wasting my time. Um Okay, so let's take a look at the part one. Um, so this is a part one. We, take a, we can take a look at the sample. Uh, we can take a look at the sample. Um, are you telling me that there is uh, the sample is by itself incorrect? Is that what you're telling me? Because it will match this thing. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. So here's what the fuck is going on Emacs. Uh, it's updated already. Um, okay, so we have the sample. Mm -hmm. Fully parsed. All right, and what I want to do here uh, is I want to remove fully parsed. Now I'm saying that the fully parsed function is occurring, so sometimes you'll get a wrong result. I'm not trying to piss you off, just trying. To, you're not. You're not trying to help me. Um, okay, so um, so inputs is uh, greater than that. Okay, so here it is. Uh, and also, let me actually print rests. What is rests? I don't have rests. Uh, inputs. Thank you. Uh, I see now. I see now. I see, I see what you mean now. Okay, cool. So, uh, yes. I'm really sorry, like, I spent like uh, three and a half hours uh, solving this scuffed problem and fighting with Lua. <laughs> so. Can't fuck. Don't fucking show this part of the clip to Funkchi. Don't fucking show this part of the clip Funkchi because it, it's another reason to, for him to call me uh, Sundari. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. All right. Mm -mm. So. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> uh, fully parsed. Okay, so let's 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 consider all of that. I suppose. Um, so there, there were two of them, right? So there was on, there were only two, and um, um, I'm calling. Them. You can find them on on Discord, by the way. <laughs> Uh, so we can have a result, like result, uh, initially result is false, uh, result, okay, all right, if, um, result, uh, if you have at least one thing that is equal to zero, result becomes true. Right, result becomes true. And once it becomes true, uh, we can stop iterating. If result, uh, well, I mean, we can just do break. So essentially, if you iterated through all of them uh, and none of them contained uh, anything there, uh, <clears throat> Um, all right. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so uh, this looks good, and that means the part one is going to be correct. Yes, you are right, I was actually lucky. I was literally lucky. Um, use my shares, okay. All right. Very interesting poke champ. Uh, mm, okay. Very, very interesting. So um, let's start with input one. And input one, as far as I know, does not contain a recursive situation, right? Eight. Uh, wait, where is the eight? Was eight forty two? Yeah, it doesn't contain a recursive thing. And eleven also doesn't contain recursive thing. Okay, cool. Um, now, 
and we can do some. Oh, th that was a bad idea. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me fix that. So here are the inputs and uh -huh. 102. Was it 102? I think it was 102. Oh, by the way, I think it's it's faster. Nah, it's not faster. It's pretty much the same. Um, <clears throat> so this is the input. Uh, and, may, uh, and let's take a look at the input two, right? So here is the input two, and that explains why it was actually faster. Uh, okay, so this is the recursive rule. Uh, another recursive rule here, and okay, poke champ, poke champ. What was the previous one? I think it was 200 something something. So it is definitely bigger than whatever we submitted. Cool. Uh, thank you so much, the major studios. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. I'm surprised that fundamentally my solution is correct. I'm actually super proud that fundamentally I didn't make any like significant mistake. It was just a mistake on interpreting the result. So I just, yeah, I didn't interpret the result properly, so fully parsed. Yeah, it makes sense, at least one empty, that means you managed to at least once. So that means my solution worked recursively um, out of the box. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, that is actually pretty cool, and yeah, nice one. Uh, I wish like you didn't have to parse that much. So, because I definitely wasted a lot of energy on parsing, and that's why at the end I started to make very stupid mistakes. And Lua, especially Lua, fucking killed me completely. Whew. But we managed to do that. We managed to solve the 19th problem, and it was okay, I suppose. And I didn't even try to do the uh, reject solution. And it is generic, right? It is generic, so it's a significantly difficult one. So, and so that means technically I have experience with formal grammars, don't I? I think I do. So I officially have experience with formal grammars. Epic. Epic, epic, epic. Cool. <clears throat> now let's do a committee committee chat. Let's do a committee committee. So I don't think we need uh, input three. So because it works with any, uh, any of that. Uh, so we don't need temp, uh, and I think I'm gonna slightly change this thing because we don't really need to. Uh, we don't really have a part one or part two, right? Because it's the same solution. So the same solution works for both part one and part two. This just doesn't matter. Nice. I don't remember from where I stole that code. It would be nice to, you know, credit it. Lua, dump variable. <laughs> Uh, so Lua dump variable, um, I wonder where I stole that code from. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, I think. It doesn't really say the license, I don't know what is a code grepper. Lua dump tempo helps you to improve as a developer. Uh, I don't know what that means, but I'm gonna actually just create this thing here, right? So this is basically from where I stole it. Uh, stolen from... Uh, here um, <clears throat> cool and let's do a readme let's do a readme um, day 11 oh there was a link to the source where is the I don't see it source Lua FAQ oh okay that's even better that's even a better source nice uh, stolen from here cool it's, li it's exactly the same Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I mean, 19, I'm sorry. Uh, 19th solution. I'm, I'm really like, a, you know. Whew. Yeah, I know, uh, it's, it's a very funny uh, solution in uh, Lua. A funny, stupid streamer. <laughs> okay, so here's the Lua org. Oh, Lua FIQ, I, th I don't think it's... Oh, it's an official, it's an official one, okay. Um, all right. Cool. Thank you so much. Um, mm -mm. Uh, all right, tested on. 
console. Oh God, I hate Lua. My God. Um, Lua version. Do I have a version? Oh, I think I think you have to do something like that. Yeah, there we go. Uh, two, 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 two. Cool. Tested on uh, expected result. Uh, it's gonna be console. P3 for 25. <laughs> you just expose yourself as a person who watched a, uh, didn't watch a single stream of mine. Uh, all right, so that's an insta ban and followers mode. Uh, let's say one hour should be okay. So we do not approve of the racist slur on this channel. There we go. Uh, let's continue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Might as well actually clear the chat as well, just in case. Ah, it doesn't work. God damn it. Very well then. Um, I, I hope that maybe in Chaterina it will work, but we do not approve of these uh, kind of words anyway. Purge Lua. Nah, I'm not gonna remove Lua, I think. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna remove Lua. So, uh, what's gonna be the next thing? Mm -hmm. So, expected result is gonna be what? It's gonna be this kind of thing. There we go. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, expected result is that. And the... Oh, it, it literally uses tab. I suppose it's just my terminal being the pega. Yeah, it's probably that. Uh, expected result. And uh, what's next? Quick start. Okay. Quick start. Install uh, Lua. Right. Install Lua. And... Uh, yeah. And make sure Lua is ava available in path. Available in path. And then just do make. There we go. So that should be it. That should be it. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Um, mm -hmm. So we also rename that. And 19 add uh, day 19 part 2 solution I'm, uh, why am I at 1 so 11 I don't know why uh, thank you ice cold witch thank you thank you thank you and uh, let's push that right into the repo so look 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 chat uh, check check this out and uh, not oh my god project so all of these solutions are available here all of the solutions are available here. Um, so, and so far we solved 19 problems and we used 19 different goddamn languages. 19 different goddamn languages. Holy fuck. Ooh. Lua was the most annoying one. Lua was the most annoying one. Holy shit. Like Pearl was not as annoying as Lua. Seriously. I like Pearl better than Lua. Um, yeah, but maybe I, if I got used to, I, well, I can see myself doing like a commercial work in Lua. It's not that bad, but it was just a little bit annoying. What's the plan for the next one? I don't know. I'm actually picking the language randomly right before the stream. Where about so far? I don't know. I don't think there is one single favorite. Like the only thing I need from a language is a, a static typing. Usually, if it, if it has a static typing, I can program it. I can just you know work with it. So uh, doesn't really matter that much for me. Um, anyways, so yeah, look at that. Isn't that cool? I think it deserves a star. What do you guys think? I think it deserves a star. So yeah, I think it's a pretty cool repo with 19 different solutions in 19 different languages, and we're still going. We're still going, and we haven't tried Lisps yet, by the way. Yes, we haven't tried Lisps. Uh, so, and we have a lot of Lisps to try. We have Scheme, Common Lisp, Emacs Lisp, Closure. Um, yeah, so maybe at some point we're gonna do Closure. What do you guys think? Hmm? Closure income? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit, Closure is gonna give me so many views. Holy fuck, yeah, I need to try Closure. <laughs> uh, we actually also tried 
all, almost all of the primary JVM languages, Java, uh, Scala, Kotlin. We haven't tried Groovy, by the way. So we have, um, you know, Lisps, um, <clears throat> all of the Lisps, Groovy. And I'm also thinking of what, Tickle, Julia. Yeah, I think, I think we'll be able to actually, you know, have 25 different languages. Um, yeah, Zik. Nah, we're not gonna do Zik. We're not gonna do Zik. No, 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 no. Dart. Yeah, definitely, we need to try Dart and Prolog. S W I Prologs uh, should be in just Fortran. Fourth, we have a lot of things to choose. And Zik is not part of them. <laughs> anyway, so uh, and by the way, also check out the Vots channel. Check out the Voz channel and uh, find a playlist called Advent of Code. We actually archive all of the streams uh, on YouTube. So at any point you will be able to go back and watch me uh, like solving um, solving all of these things like as, as a screencast. C sharp, we actually did C sharp. Uh, here, here it is. But maybe F sharp could be also an option. Yeah. But F sharp is essentially a camel, but it's kind of a different language. Anyway, I'm already streaming for four hours and I definitely don't have enough time to, uh, you know, COBOL. <laughs> I'm not sure about COBOL. COBOL. COBOL is too weird. Maybe for the last day. I heard the last day is actually easy, so it doesn't ruin your Christmas or something. Uh, yeah, so we'll see. And thank you uh, so much, the person who pointed out my mistake. I forgot their nickname, something something studio. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately, it is time. The the major studios. Yeah, thank you so much. It's uh, the major studios. Uh, that's it for today, boys and girls. That's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate that. Have a good one, and I see you all uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're gonna uh, continue doing Advent of Code, and if we have time, we're gonna continue developing our Lisp interpreter. Yes, we are working on a Lisp interpreter. Uh, well, I mean, since Advent, uh, Advent of Code derailed my entire month, so I'm doing Advent of Code. Uh, it's actually super fun, and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, but yeah, uh, so usually when it's not Advent of Code, we're developing this thing on Mondays. It's our own Lisp interpreter as a library. It's supposed to be like similar to Lua. Lua is supposed to be like embedded uh, scripting language. This is embedded Lisp. So you can embed it into your C application and script in that language. Uh, so, and we're gonna continue to develop that uh, tomorrow if we have enough time. Check out our uh, schedule for more information on different projects we're working on uh, when it's not Advent of Code. But tomorrow is gonna be definitely Advent of Code. And uh, also check out our Woods channel for uh, all the archives of the streams. This stream is going to be there, but tomorrow we archive them on the next day. And also check out our Discord server for offline discussion with the community. And while you're waiting for a continuation of Epic Advent of Code development, let's maybe raid somebody. How about that? We haven't raided people for a while. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Uh, so who should we rate? Is is anyone doing Advent of Code right now who we can raid and pass on, uh, you know, the viewers? Stuff like that. F fast website, by the way. Pilata is streaming. Holy fuck, we need to raid Pilata. We need to raid Dan Clada. Come on. He's doing programming. Cool. Let's rate by ladder. Uh, right. Uh, Paj Lada. Cool. All right. Get ready for the raid, boys and girls. Get ready for the raid. And I see you all tomorrow. Love you. Mwah.